Today was a solar eclipse, and it's the only thing anyone talked about. So I'm sitting there watching the news and just thinking, like, this is really boring. Look, the solar eclipse was fun. We went out. We saw it. We're in the 90% zone. So it was pretty cool. Didn't get pitch black, but did get really dark. I think it was deceiving because your pupils dilate, and so it doesn't feel like it's a lot darker. But then when we went back in the house, I was like, whoa, it's like nighttime out, basically. So it was pretty cool. Then you turn on the news, and they're interviewing people who are like, it was a spiritual moment for me. And they're like, what was the greatest thing about the eclipse? And they're like, I really liked how it got dark. And I'm like, oh, shut up, dude. Like, we enjoyed the eclipse. It was cool for a lot of people. They're never going to see one again. We get it. But man, the craziest thing was on The View, Sonny Hostin said that climate, uh, that, that the solar eclipse, that cicadas and earthquakes were climate change. And that's what many people are watching. Now, to be fair, Whoopi Goldberg desperately tried to correct Sonny Hostin, but also didn't know what she was talking about either. So they just sounded all very, very stupid. And this is how people are informed and it's how they vote. Oh, boy. So we'll talk about that, I guess, because it's the eclipse day and, you know, we'll go over that uh, that stuff. But uh, Donald Trump did release his abortion plan. That is, he believes it should be up to, left up to the states. The states should pass their own laws on abortion and it shouldn't be a question of the federal government, which has basically pissed everybody off because now the left is still running the same line they did. Oh, they're going to ban abortion. And the conservatives are saying you've given up the fight and you were just giving into independence for no reason. So we'll talk about that, plus uh, a bunch of other news pertaining to the election and stuff like that. It, it'll be interesting. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com to buy coffee. Why? Because coffee is delicious, and we have some of the best. As you can see, Whole Bean Appalachian Nights is sold out. It's so good, it is very difficult for us to keep it in stock, but ground Appalachian Nights and the and the coffee pods are still available. And we got a bunch of other blends as well. Rise with Roberto Jr. is our breakfast blend light roast. People really seem to love that one. When you buy from Cast Brew Coffee, you are supporting our physical location. So the first location is in Martinsburg, West Virginia. It's going to be a physical hangout space where you can come, you can hang out, you can buy coffee. And if you are a member, at least a hundred bucks, that's the elite club, you'll get a key fob to actually beep yourself into the building, go up to the private club on the second floor. That's what it's all about. That should be coming in the next couple of months. We're really excited for that. And that's what the point of Casper Coffee is. We sponsor ourselves. And when you buy that coffee, we want to set up locations across the country where everybody can hang out, network, and it's really important. That's how you win a culture war. Now, when you become a member at TimCast.com, You'll get access to our Discord server where you can digitally network with other people. And as a member, you can submit questions to call in and talk to us and our guests on the members only show Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. So we will have one of those for you tonight. So sign up at TimGuest.com right now. You don't want to miss it. You can also smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with all your friends everywhere that uh, if everybody who watched the show right now shared it, we'd be the biggest show in the world. And uh, with that support, uh, that'd be fantastic. We could uh, we could win this culture war. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Tiffany Justice. Hey, thank you for having me tonight. Tim. Who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm the co-founder of Moms for Liberty. I'm a wife and a mom. I served on school board and now I try to get uh, other re great Americans to run for office. Okay, right on. Should be fun. We got Hannah Claire hanging out. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com at Scanner News. I'm really grateful to be a part of that team. Um, i I can't remember the rest of my intro. Ian's here. It was here. pretty good. I like that. That was almost good. That was good. Shout out to your team. Yes. Who, who's on your team, by the way? Uh, Chris Carr, Cassandra McDonald, Chris Bertman, Adrian Norman. It's been a, it's, I, I'm really, uh, it's so cool to see the newsroom. And I think I'm coming up on my third year with that team. So it's very, great very cool. Great team. I know those people personally. They're all great. I love them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Hannah Claire, good to see you too. Nice Tiffany, to great to meet you. Nice I went for a walk uh, this morning. I went for like a three to four, three mile walk. And then I worked out and then I got a sports massage, got cupped. You guys ever do cupping? I think we talked about it before the show a little bit. He has giant purple welts all over his Yeah, back. and like some some of these cups, what they do is they stick like a suction on your back, really tighten the suction and let it sit there for like a 30 seconds to they a They move it around. You oh, did Michael they? They didn't Phelps move mine. Now. He just put new ones on in different spots. And some of the spots, you get it sucked and it's like you feel the juice getting pulled out of something, out of the tendon or the muscle. Some of them was like- I mean, Fascia. Like, the fascia. And one thing he told me that was cool, he's like, when you have a tight spot, because my neck was a little tight, when you have one, you got this fascia, this interconnected, you know, web of, of muscle in your body. When one piece gets tight, it pulls on the entire rest of the body. Tight. So he was helping me kind of, it's, if you soar in one spot, it might be other areas that need to be worked on. It was really cool. And now Ian's drinking Alpha Brain. It's, and that's why I probably talked for a minute <laughs> and a half for the intro. Yeah, I had Alpha Brain, Joe Rogan's, um, it's a... Uh, what is the, it's the Onnit is the company. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Joe Rogan, Aubrey Marcus. Thanks guys. Great stuff. 
Serge is pressing the buttons. Yeah, I had some of that stuff too. It's actually pretty good. Uh, the Mayor Lemon one. I can attest it is nice. I'm Serge.com. Let's just get started, Tim. Oh, man. It was an eclipse day, and we have this story from Mediite. Sonny Hostin blames eclipses and earthquakes on climate change as View co-hosts scramble to correct her. Oh, man. Can I just play the clip for you? Because it was worse than that. She mentioned cicadas, too. And, you know, we jokingly talked on this show about the plagues of Egypt, like darkness, locusts, whatever. I don't think earthquakes is one of them. But uh, it seems like she's seriously arguing some kind of pseudo. It, it's 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 crazy because we can joke about the plagues of Egypt in a religious context. They actually have some kind of cult like pseudo scientific worldview. Let me play the clip for you guys. Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the rapture then, is here. The rapture is here. And then also, I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although, cicadas. For the first time in cicada, cicada. like cicada. no, 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 no. Two different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. Two different, <laughs> times. two different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different coming. times. Times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad. But no. for the first time <laughs> in in many many years. No, seven, so, every seventeen years this happens. Well. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way, say all those all those things yeah, I, together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists that's more or something point. is really or something going going returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't. I don't it, think it, that's it happens. Oh. In the <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, look, let me break down for you this show. It's it's so incredible what The View represents. OK. Whoopi Goldberg is a moron. Sonny Hostin is a moron. It's a whole bunch of morons who have no idea what they're talking about, informing millions of people every day. That's right. Let's start with what Sonny said, which is moronic. You have cicadas. Okay, it's cicadas, mm -hmm. but that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind when someone mispronounces a word. It means they learned it from reading, and I can respect that. So she was actually seeking out new information. And Sonny's actually not completely wrong on the rarity of this cicada a moment. Whoopi, thinking she's much smarter and Sonny is wrong, then no, no, it's, it's 17 years. I'm... Okay. The cicadas are not because of climate change. The solar eclipse, heavens, is not because of climate change. <laughs> it's just the moon. Earthquakes are not climate change. We had that, I uh, was it a New Jersey politician. And can I just pull this up so I can also debunk Whoopi Goldberg? The 13 and 17 year broods that will emerge from underground this spring will be appearing together for the first time in 221 years. It is just by nature math. If you go 13 years, every 13 years, and you go every 17 years, eventually they will hit at the same time. It's just math. Classic patriarchy using math to oppress women. I don't understand. It's prime numbers. I feel bad for women because of the view. Yeah, I do too. I do too. <laughs> because there's a guy on this that This is not panel. who I want representing me. This is, we are not sending our best. But it's it's safetyism. I mean, because she they want to they she has to have a reason why all of this is happening because it, of course it's humans. Of course it's going to be climate change because they it makes them feel like they can control it. But you can't control earthquakes. That's scary for them. I think um, unless unless maybe there's yeah. a government program with the earthquake weapons. I think like it's in that movie, the tremor blaster. What, what, yeah, was, yeah. what was that movie? The core. Yeah, I've still never seen it. <laughs> when, they, when they drilled down. Yeah, because the government was using earthquake weapons and it stopped the rotation oh, of the core that. of the earth. Yeah, I so maybe script about that's that. That's true. <laughs> Perhaps that's true. No, to me, this shows how little they understand about environmental concerns because they're just blaming yeah. actually anything that happens outside on the environmental changes, I guess. And it makes me think you're like, we, we always talk about how a lot of millennials say they're not going to have children because of the environment, right? Like this is just becoming an excuse for anything. When you don't do your homework, you can start saying, well, the environment, climate I could change. not, climate change. I just can't like, yeah. can't show up for it. Well, climate change. Like, is there a reason why you miss work? <sighs> when, if you have to break up with someone, be like, it's not you, it's climate change. <laughs> like, it's, it's climate, amazing. Climate changes. That's what climate does. When the moon moves through the sky, the solar climate is changing. When the tide comes up, the climate is changed. So when they say that climate change is like a specific thing, they're missing the mark. They want to create like, Ca all caps climate change like a like a proper noun specific thing but it's just you know climate changes and then you build a new technology and it changes in a different way and then you do but a the different audacity they could do something to stop earthquakes i mean the idea that they could do anything to stop nature and the force of nature hurricanes it's crazy it's crazy or or the make, power chip like, okay to, i mean i don't i do not believe the government can make earthquakes i believe that you can drop a nuclear bomb on the ground which can 
create a seismic shock similar to that of an earthquake to a certain degree. But I mean, we're looking, what, what, what was it? Like a seven point something in Taiwan? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't believe there are earthquake weapons. Sorry. Really? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't believe it, but I don't. I wouldn't say there are none. With, can't with rule certainty. it out, says Ian. Because like it's a good weapon. If you had control of one of those, you could really mess somebody How? up. Yeah, fear is a very and, powerful tool. So I can certainly understand that the government may have access to technologies that we are not familiar with. I think a lot of UFOs or UAPs, they call them now, are probably experimental aircraft or something. I think. I think in more than one instance, we know that is actually the case. People are like, oh, I saw a UFO, and then it was like, oh, actually, they were testing some kind of aircraft. I don't know for sure, but based on our modern understanding of science, I don't think you could trigger like short of maybe like fracking, like a serious endeavor of launching a massive operation of drilling into the ground and injecting frack fluid to create tensions. I don't know how you, you know, remotely trigger earthquakes. Tesla so actually, te Nikola Tesla in his New York apartment was working on like vibrating something and he caused a local earthquake in the city and the cops came down and were like what are you doing and they shut him down and he had to go to this warden he had to leave I, i'm pretty sure they shut him down after that happened so he actually legitimately caused an earthquake and i think he was just working with electricity and vibration he was like it's not me it's climate change yeah and they're like what are you talking about what's yeah, climate change and he's like damn i came back too and that too, was too soon that was like a hundred years ago that he was doing that so if he was able to figure out how to vibrate create a frequency that caused the earth to start to shake shut okay up, Okay, so so okay, fine. There is there is a, a controversy over whether or not man can create earthquakes, but the solar eclipse, okay, being caused by climate change has to be one of the funniest things. And it shows you that these people are they're a cult, okay? Yeah. They don't know what climate change means. They have no idea. They're like, it's an eclipse, it's climate change. It's like we, we predicted this eclipse fifty years ago. They're, they were playing the, sh the 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 from the seventies or whatever, where they're like that will be the last total eclipse that we'll see. And the next will be in the year 2024. And I'm like, that was like 50 years ago they said that. Okay. And have so, you ever been in the path of totality? Have you ever, like, I had a little like fear of missing out today. Part of me was like, gosh, I really should have gone and seen it. Like, I, I don't think you, so. No. no. Did you see 90%? Yeah. That was I, today. But I kind of felt like I have people, I have friends who went different places. I think, it would, I mean, it would be pretty cool. Totality would be pretty sweet. It was pretty unifying to see how many different kinds of people were like yeah, yeah i want to see this thing i will i will leave my office building i'll i'll take my kids out of school like i will make a point to see this thing that we won't see for a very very long time some of us never again you know like I, in this very you know uh split and divisive time funny that not being able to see the sun brought us all together maybe we should have more eclipses i think people are fascinated with stars and space yeah, and like I exploration so and but it's when it's so far away it's hard to even it's like out of sight out of mind like if mars was really close to us we'd be really into it all frequently like people would be talking about it want to go there and all that so so here's here's the question i have is the people on the view like whoopi goldberg who is a midwit and sunny hostin who is a dimwit <laughs> you know is that the degree of intellect that Democrats and most Republicans have? Or is it that the uniparty establishment are actually intelligent people who want to manipulate stupid people for power? Like, are the people who are behind Joe Biden intelligent and capable of a conversation around what they're doing? Or are they just as stupid as the View hosts? I don't know. I, when I watch like AOC and Kamala Harris, I, I do, people will say like, oh, they're idiots. I don't think they're idiots. I think AOC knows exactly what she's doing. I think Kamala Harris knows exactly what she's doing when she's messaging to people. So I, I think that they're not quite as stupid as, as everyone would like to think they are. Yeah, but the maybe, people on The View are. But what's their wisdom level? You know, yeah, that's what well, I wonder. I mean, Sunny, I, I was sharing. Sunny also said that um, her son walking down a beach in Florida was yelled, someone yelled the N-word at him several times. Like, I, I think she's a liar. Honestly, yeah. I think she's willing to say whatever it is she needs to say in order to, to keep be being on the show. To be fair, could have been a nuisance YouTuber <laughs> or TikToker. And maybe she exaggerated. I had a friend that always would add one. He'd be like, dude, we played nine times. I'd be like, we played eight times, <laughs> by the way. And, and but, he would do it a lot. And then that can like but, extrapolate into like bigger lies. You know, right, right, but, but I'll give her this. There are, there are a, a big wave of people who go on TikTok and they intentionally film themselves doing things like that. And so... They're trying to get controversy and clicks because even when you are made fun of on the internet, you can make money of it. Maybe. I think uh, what she was saying was in the frame of reference of like, uh, you know, America is a very racist country and, and that, you know, you could just walk down the beach and be a black person and get yelled at in, you know, especially Florida, right? Florida is just, you know, the most transphobic racist state we have, right? That's what the, that was has been sold. And so I, I you know, I just think she is, um, she's useful. And she, yeah. you know, she enters things into the ether of conversation. And 
I wonder if she thought, you know, she'd get support from the environmental activists out there. Of course. Like, I'm bringing up how dangerous the environment is, and so that will win me support among the crowd. Which, again, I stand by. I don't think anyone at this point knows what climate change or what environmental issues they think they're advocating for. Because it's just become this sort of blanket catch-all term for, you know, a problem someone else has created. And if I'm trendy, if, I, if I'm socially current, if I'm doing the things that I think will win me attention, I'm saying this word all the time, no matter what. Yeah, I, what I like to do is be specific. I want to pull the carbon dioxide out of the air, turn it into graphene. I want to fire an electrolaser into the sun and charge it with hydrogen so we can keep fueling the thing so it doesn't expand and explode and we can keep our solar system stable. Like, we, have, real, we have a couple billion years, don't we? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, we'll be all right. Yeah, we will be. We've got a lot of good climate change we can do as humans. Sitting around with, you know, our just diddling while we pump carbon out there is not the right path. We've got to reuse the stuff. But how are you going to stop the earthquakes? Because I heard those were caused by climate change. Yes. And the eclipses. Or, the eclipses. or worse. Please. If the earthquakes are caused by carbon and Ian takes all the carbon for his graphene, then there won't be any earthquakes anymore. How could you do this to us? You're taking away the earthquakes? I know. Mm. Ian, that's kind of mean. That's Sorry rude. about that, guys. It's going to have to be stable for a while. <laughs> It's going to have to be stable for a while. All right. Well, in the meantime, the the big news politically is that Donald Trump has announced his abortion policy positions. SCNR.com reports Trump's abortion policy position draws criticism from conservatives and liberals. Former President Donald Trump Monday annu uh, Monday's announcement that he supports states' rights at abortion legislation has drawn criticism in equal measure from conservatives and liberals. Quote, my view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. And that in, uh, in this case, the law of the state. The former president acknowledged that states will differ in regard to laws regulating abortion access. Quote, many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative laws than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for your for our country and vote. So important vote. Trump also said he was strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest and situations that could threaten the life of the mother. At the end of the day, it's all about the will of the people. That's where we are right now. And that's what we want. You know, what's really fascinating is um, we've talked on the show about whether or not there is a possibility that abortion could be a catalyst for civil conflict in this country the way slavery was. Because both are a question of the rights of, of human life, whether or not they have full rights under the Constitution and sovereign independence, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the left argues, well, I guess Democrats argue, as they did with slavery and once again with abortion, that the subjects of these arguments are not, in fact, deserving of full constitutional rights for whatever reason. Now, today, Democrats would say, oh, that's absurd. A zygote's not a human. A black person is. Therefore, it's not, it's not the same argument. I'm not arguing the same thing. I'm saying back then you had slavery and you had the Republican Party. Abraham Lincoln did not say abolish slavery. He said, leave it up to the states. The states that have slavery can keep it. The states that, do, that don't won't have it. However, he was opposed to the expansion of slavery in the new territories. We don't really have new territories right now. I mean, like we have territories, but not really an issue. So Trump taking this compromise position is very much similar to what Lincoln did. So seeing that, I'm curious as to whether or not abortion could end up being a large uh, catalyst for some kind of upheaval in this country if it does get to it, considering no one, no one will, in my opinion, will accept the results of this election. And I think Democrats and Republicans, at least who are paying attention, probably agree. But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about Trump's position? I, I think he followed what the Supreme Court said. And I think that, you know, I, I think we need to do a better job of um, showing, uh, explaining 15 weeks, explaining 25 weeks, explaining 30 weeks, showing, uh -huh. telling stories about babies that have survived at, at, at you know, early birth times, right? Um early in like in the second trimester um, thir and third trimester, I think we just don't personalize the issue enough. So the fact that we're still having this argument tells me that we're not talking about this in a, in a real enough way with people. How would you personalize it? You show the story of a, a, of a child that was born prematurely and was able to, to grow and, and thrive in their lifetime. And you talk about that child's name. And I mean, I think we just need to show people, you know, that a baby born at 29 weeks, what does that baby actually look like? Um, you know, I, I I mean, I, I went and did a town hall for Nikki Haley up in uh, New Hampshire. She talked about 15 weeks there. 
Um, there was broad consensus, to be honest with you. Ron Johnson has been very clear in the position. I was with him in Milwaukee over the summer. He spoke about it with Republicans. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it's an issue that um, the Supreme Court was clear as a state's issue. There are other issues that we need to handle at the states. And I just think we need to have better arguments at the state level um, in order to advance the positions that we want. This has been the Republican position forever. With Roe v. Wade, all the Republicans were saying it should be up to the states to decide. Right. And now that we're there, Trump's saying, hey, we're here. You've got conservatives saying no. It didn't we feel have, radical. Allie Beth Stuckey says, weak, weak statement that is a signal for independents who will never vote for him anyway. IVF involves eugenics, the indefinite freezing of embryos and the mass discarding of embryos. Babies conceived via rape and incest are just as much babies as any other. Why do they deserve the death penalty for the circumstances of their conception? This simply isn't a pro-life statement. So I, I disagree. I think Trump made the smart political move, and I believe this will. Uh, I don't believe this will earn votes, but I believe it will protect some of the moderate votes that he already has. Meaning independent voters who are like, I'll probably vote for Trump, heard this and said, yeah, it's fine. Are evangelical voters not going to vote for him because of this? I don't right. Think so. they, of course, no they're going to vote for him no matter what. Yeah. There's no way they're voting and for him. And they Biden. would rather it be regulated at the state level in federally. I mean, I think the thing is, with any pro-life position, if you believe life begins at conception, of course, you don't want anybody to have an abortion, right? And you believe that any embryo uh, created through IVF is legitimate and deserves a chance at life. But this is now the opportunity for the pro-life movement, in my opinion, to go campaign at the state level. I think so, right? too. If you believe this, now is your time to win hearts and minds, especially because the legislation is open to conversion. Anytime a uh, state convenes their legislative session, if you're a pro-life person, you now have the chance to change the abortion laws to be closer to what you'd like them to be. When it was at the federal level, it was much more difficult and you weren't really able to campaign in the personal way that you were talking about. It's much easier to campaign in your neighborhood than it would be to try and be like, everyone in the country, pay attention to my position. I think uh, conservatives have two big issues here. And the first is that their argument has no logical consistency. The idea of states determining whether or not if the conservative position is that babies are being murdered, the idea that they would say you can decide at the state level whether a person can be murdered seems to make no sense. The other issue is that conservatives being unwilling to argue their moral position means you will never win that moral position. That's true. So you've got all these conservatives saying, like, I believe right now it probably is the the uh, political decision that the right political move for Trump to say this. Uh, however, the problem is in the long term, the, the goal for Trump is we got to win the House. OK, he, 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 he posted on Truth attacking Lindsey Graham, saying he's too absolutist on this one. He's going to hand the House to Democrats. We got to win the House. It's more than abortion. Abortion is not the only issue. And that's why I think politically it's the right move. However, on the issue strictly of abortion, conservatives have to literally argue. If you don't argue, then the only thing anyone hears is you're stripping women of their rights. Liberals are arguing ad nauseum. And Republicans are just bowing out and hiding. OK, so then you have a guy who's no idea what's going on. And he sits down and someone goes, hey, did you hear they want to take women's rights away? And he goes, really? How? And they go, the banning abortion. He goes, huh? Then he looks over the Republican and says, what's really going on? And the guy goes, don't talk to me about it. And he goes, OK, I guess they were right the whole time. Right. Conservatives aren't making any moral arguments on this. That's why I wish they would talk more about IVF because they all immediately got scared and like, no, of course we don't want to ban IVF. I don't think you should ban IVF. But I think when you like IVF, you create, there's a couple different ways to do it, but you create a batch of embryos and then the doctor will say these ones, these three of the six are the most viable, but we'll put all of them on ice. And some of them don't survive being frozen. At any point, a conservative could say, you know, OK, I believe that you have created six children and that you have a moral obligation to see all of these pregnancies through in some manner, you know, like it would be a more interesting conversation and you would be able to talk about your morality. But instead, they get worried that they're going to offend someone or be upset if they were to say left begins at conception. And I think you have an obligation. They just immediately back off. They get scared. Yeah, I, I think to that point, the only way out is through on all of these issues. And we're going to have to have those conversations. You just have to. You have to talk about for it. Like, because I'm kind of I'm very neutral on this issue. I, I have been for a long time. I don't like it. I don't like killing in general. And I really don't like that. But, um, you know, also time and a place for these kind of things. And, and in war, killing is okay, I guess. There are time and a place for killing, I guess. But like, if you could net, neural net these these babies in the womb, little 13 week, maybe like a 30 week or a 20 week child, and they're somehow they're able to communicate somehow. And they say, please don't kill me. And you get that communication from one of these things. 
things. Well, that's people, <laughs> yeah, I would immediately get on the do not kill that thing. Well, and to that point, there are different charities that will ch do ultrasounds for people and show them the baby before they abort the baby. And, and once you make that connection, I mean, I've been pregnant five times, had four children. Um, once the first time you see your baby on the ultrasound and you can see your baby moving, I mean, it's just, it's a totally different experience. And so there's, I think to your point, you're right. I think we should be talking about the issue more and debating. And even even the 15 week debate to me is a relevant debate to have. Yeah. What's that? The idea that you would say, no, you would ban abortions after 15 weeks. And I, I still, do I agree with it? No, but I'm, is it better than, you know, going to the end of term? Yes. And I would think just even in the conversation about 15 weeks, I still think that we would have and 15 weeks is because of pain right it's because of pain yeah and um the fetus can feel pain and and so i just think that in this moment of time where we do have babies that are being aborted later in pregnancies that we should be willing to at least have the conversation talk about it in an honest manner with the ultimate goal of ending you know abortion because it is murder i think there is a strong historical precedent that abortion will be made completely illegal it uh i don't know exactly how serious violence could get around the issue. I think the current form of the conservative pro-life argument, uh, I, I believe Ali, uh, Ali Batsucki is correct on it's not a pro-life statement. It's morally, it's morally inconsistent. I think this is another problem for Republicans in that you can't come out and say this is murdering a baby, but also we think states can choose whether they do that or not. It doesn't, it, that's, and so the, the argument then for a moderate person is they can't possibly hold that position unless they're hypocrites. You can't say they're killing babies and then come out and be like, but you can decide if you want to keep doing that. You can't claim it's murder and then say it's okay somewhere. And a lot of people are saying killing is never right. They'll say that. I saw that on Twitter a lot today. And I'm like, I'm just thinking about war that when time sanctioned killing is often the right way to go horribly well, in the history I, of humanity. That's what war is all about. I think it's fair to say it's never right, but sometimes you're backed into a corner. But sometimes you have to stop the enemy, like World War II. We, we weren't back right. into a corner. We just went over there that, and stopped the guy. To that point, I don't think anyone's saying that it's right. That's why I think I disagree with you a little bit. I, I don't think that Trump, I think I don't think there was anything about what he said where he said it was okay. I think he said right now it's a state level issue. And and any issue that we're dealing with something that's a, a state level issue, we need to engage fully and make the best argument. Sure. And, and I but, will, but it shouldn't be a state level issue. That That, that is morally inconsistent. Uh, well, it, but it is right now. No, all, all right. But I'm saying... The only morally consistent position for someone who's pro-life is the Constitution says human, a, a person in the United States, you don't have to be a citizen, has inalienable rights and due process rights. You can't. So I, I've uh, let, me, let me do this. I, I love I love pulling this up. The 14th Amendment. Because I believe uh, the 14th Amendment. Let me see if we actually this is the right one. OK, the 14th Amendment. This question needs to be answered. Section one, all persons born or naturalized in the United States are sub and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state w uh, wherein they reside, period. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, semicolon, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The Supreme Court needs to answer the question. Are the unborn persons? Yes or no? I'm not saying yes or no to that question. I'm saying the only morally consistent position is if you believe babies are human beings, they qualify as not citizens, but at least persons, mm -hmm. and they cannot be denied their rights without due process. Meaning under this, if, if, if it is to be lo logically and morally consistent, if a woman wants to get an abortion for any reason under the 14th Amendment, she would have to go to court first. I kind of think that like they messed this this uh, section up, like, why didn't they say all persons born or naturalized in the United States, et cetera, down to the third line, uh, deprive, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty. But why not say any person born of life, liberty or property? Why are they why did they go from persons born or naturalized to just because persons? You're saying, like, if you're not a citizen of the United States, we can't deprive you of life or liberty. Like you are still. You right. have to recognize the humanity of other people, even if they're not citizens of America. That's why we're not like, oh, you're a foreign national. We've arrested. So you get treated completely differently than we treat American so citizens. So maybe that was their intention. And now people are potentially using this to, to argue that unborn children are also persons. I yeah. would I would argue that the further you go back in time, the higher the likelihood is that individuals viewed unborn babies as persons. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. It is only in modern scientific context where you get zygote. 
Yeah. That's you know, what and, weirds and me the out about Psychos IVF. Psychos aren't people. Like with IVF, if you're a parent, you or you want to be a parent really badly, and you make a bunch of it. Let's say you make five embryos, and you have two children through that, and you have one or two left over, then suddenly those aren't your children. Like it is weird how much the brain can switch this on and off. When you wanted them, they were potentially children, and when you didn't want them, they are no longer children. That's bizarre to me. They either are, or they are. That aren't. was like, or, that, yeah, go ahead. Or that there are laws where if a woman is pregnant. <laughs> And you commit a crime which causes the death of the pregnancy, you get charged for it as, as right. yeah. The baby counts then. Right, the baby counts then. Yeah. So I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm certainly saying there is a current political conundrum for Republicans where they fear that if they actually address the moral issue, they will lose. I got bad news for you. That means conservatives publicly are admitting they are in the weak moral position and they are not on moral grounds. Like, I, I don't know how to put it. Unless maybe that's unfair and it's conservatives believe people are inherently selfish and evil and would want to kill babies. So there's no point in arguing their position because they'll lose political power by doing so. I, I suppose that's what's being said. I feel we, like, like Republicans are saying we cannot win the argument. I mean, I think that's, until that, you, that's a crazy thought you, to say about humans. Like until you can prove that these unborn children are actually people, that they actually have some sort of like capacity to be a human before they're born, unless you can like prove it, there's no real argument. But to make, this is think. where all humans ever have come from. It's yeah. like um ever. It's, it's not never, like it's, it's never a puppy at the end. <laughs> they're yeah, people, but they're like people <laughs> seeds. It's like if you hand me a, a handful of oak weird. seeds, <laughs> if you hand me a handful of oak seeds, you wouldn't say, "Look at all these oak trees in your hand." These are seeds that maybe, if they're treated right, will one day be an oak tree. But the well, it's very different from like an embryo. That yeah, you're talking is, about like an egg. An egg. That's so different. so so what if what if the tree is planted and it's sprouted and it's got a little stem? It looks good, but if someone steps on it, it's not going to become an oak tree. So yeah, you, or that's, that's, that's why you're killing the tree. You, you, might, tree. you might argue it has become a sapling, but like an oak sapling. But like, like when it, it pokes out of the ground, if you, if you dig your heel into it, you know it's not going to become the oak tree that you thought it was going to become. And well, it's the same thing with it. these embryos. Yeah, and if there is a small sure, child, sure. yeah, does that? And if a small child is hit by a car, well, they're not going to be a human, I guess. Never going to be an adult for sure. Only like a quarter of one, to be fair. Yeah. Are you talking about the three fifths argument from the? What? Okay, no, no. <laughs> no um, I wasn't. Thank you. Well, I think until <laughs> until they're born, they're not they're not like um they're not people because you don't believe legally. life begins at conception. But like I think they're alive. I just don't think they become people until they're born legally. Mm, but so what are they in the intro? Just but by, budding seeds of humanity. So, but if you kill a pregnant people. mom, you get charged with yes. If you take her unborn child away from her by force against her will, you deserve that hey, murder look, charge. So it it's, is a kid it's then? fine. I actually think. It really does get to a point where there's no reason to argue it. There's there's no reason to argue it. The Supreme Court needs to answer the question: mm. Are the unborns person Roe uh, persons? Roe v. Wade was a very feeble attempt at this, and there was actually an interesting. I think originally, because it was actually Roe v. Wade. And there was another case in the '90s, I believe. Roe v. Wade. Uh, it's been so long since we went over this, but there was basically the the well before a certain amount of time. It's it's not capable of surviving on its own. But after a certain amount, of time when it, certain amount of time when it is, well, now there's a question of whether it's now attained personhood rights as it is an independent being capable of surviving on its own. There are, there are conundrums there. So one of the big issues we have right now is that liberals are arguing for up to, up to birth abortion. But now, it's not really about that. It's really about women's rights to them. Like, they, you know, they don't frame it really around the, I mean, you're correct. We should be talking more about the fact that they support up to birth abortion we right. should, when we talk about the baby, but they don't talk about any of that, right? But when we debate them, they say, so what? It's a woman's right to choose. And my point has always been, look, I'm, I'm not a staunch pro-lifer. I don't have a hardcore, the baby must always survive. I'm, I think there's challenges in terms of what the government can and can't afford, enforce as to, to how a person shares their body uh, with another person. But- the idea that the baby could survive on its own and you would grant a woman the right to kill it simply because it is inside of her at the time doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me. And so, uh, you know, we had this debate, I think it was with Lance from the Serfs, when he when I said, OK, so a woman is pregnant. She no longer wants to be pregnant. I'm totally fine with her not being. I, I would not for forced birth or whatever. He kept saying that forced birth. I'm like, no, 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 I, I agree with you. No forced birth. How do we get the baby out? Mm -hmm. And he was like, abortion. I was like, well, do, why kill it? Why do you have to kill it on the way out? How about you just take it out? And he was like, huh? They, they, you don't have to kill it. You could abort there it. There are seven. other options. So if it's at seven months, someone says, I don't want to have a baby. It's like, okay, well, did you know you could take a baby and put it on the doorstep of like a fire department mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just leave? And that's legal? They will, they will, yeah. what, what are they called? Like 
baby boxes. Baby boxes. Some whatever? jurisdictions, or is that a federal thing? It different places mm. have different regulations for it. But there'll be a place where it says like baby safe zone. Yeah. I don't want wherever. some random woman to go do that tonight, thinking that no, every I mean, fire like, is better than throwing a dumpster. They look like like That's when true. you go to the library to drop off your books. It's you put a baby in there. It's because you can put them in there and they're safe. The heating safe. An alarm goes off in the fire station so that the child isn't left in exposure to die. They're they're protected. So then the issue for the left is. Why not that? So we're, uh, uh, we're going to segue into the next segment, and I'm going to say the word Civil War because the movie <sighs> is coming out in two days. You guys going to go see it? A24? Is that the A24 production movie? Company? Yeah, we got we got the first tickets available for the pre-screeners on Thursday. I'm going to wait. If, on I hear, if I hear good reviews, I'll go see the, it. The bet everyone needs to make now is, will there be a character in the movie based on me? I mean, I guess I'll go. <laughs> if a bunch of people go, I'll go. If we we, we, we only got a couple tickets because okay, yeah, the, the earliest showing is four. That'd be funny if there was like a guy on the internet yelling about it. I mean, oh, you know, this is not going to come in. I mean, I've don't been, say I've that. Been, I've been talking about it since 2018. And there's a lot of people who watch the show. So I'd be surprised if they weren't at least aware of the things I've said about it. So, but doesn't mean they would include a fictional version of, of like a podcast show doing something like this. But uh, before we segue up, my final thoughts, thoughts on this are there, there is no tenable solution between people saying you are murdering babies and the left saying we have the right to murder babies. Mm -hmm. Like what, what I mean by that is I'm not being cute. When the left argues that a woman can abort the baby at nine months, they're literally just saying kill the baby before, before right. it can breathe air. Mm -hmm. When the right argues it is always killing a baby, it is of the moral view that life begins at conception and you have no right to do it. When the left argues we can abort at nine months, they're arguing they have a right to kill a baby. I see this as such a, a massive moral divide. It's in many ways worse than the issue of slavery. The issue of slavery was that you had to care for the person. And there were certainly abusive and, and hor horrible atrocities in, in the slave trade and everything like that. But these are people who were alive. They were alive. This is a question right now morally of whether to end a life or not. So there is a much more serious element to this than there was to slavery. And we're now at the point where the, the example I have to bring up is Colorado, which has removed all restrictions, and Oklahoma, which has banned all abortion. So we these are these are bordering states. Mm -hmm. you, you we're getting into dangerous territory where a woman flees Oklahoma into Colorado, pursued by law enforcement for con, for conspiracy to commit murder or whatever the law is in Oklahoma. I think it was uh, I don't I don't know what state it was. Maybe Alabama. Alabama has was that the one? Laws. Well, the one where they said they will hunt the woman down for conspiracy. Remember that? Um, yeah, Alabama will. Uh, let me double check right now. But there, I think there it was is one Alabama. state where they said a woman plotted an abortion in our state. That's conspiracy to commit a crime, and we will arrest her for this. Plotted an abortion, meaning set up to go somewhere yep. else to do it. To and, go they out had, of state. and how did they know that? That the uh, she, it's it's not from it's, Alexa. It hasn't. Her. It's just a law they passed, right? It no, no, no. There's a specific know? example. Was there an example? I'm pretty sure. Like, how would they of, know that you were plotting? Or they there was a woman who said, uh, a, a woman said she called me and she talked to me and she said, here's what I want to do. And I said, here's what you do. And they said, okay, there's a conspiracy now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they said, that's a, that's a conspiracy to commit a murder. And then other people argued that makes no sense because if it's illegal to gamble in Texas, you drive up to Oklahoma where they have one of the biggest casinos in the world. Nobody charges you with, you, charges you with conspiracy to gamble. Right. So it's it's interesting where this is going. But I believe this this depending on the willpower, depending on the structure of uh, of conflict these days, the internet may make this untenable. We may not get hot conflict. I, I have no idea. But this is a serious, stark moral contrast where these, I don't know how you live uh, in, in the same world. I think you're- The you're... Alabama one is, uh, there was a law passed that said healthcare providers could face felony charges for assisting Alabama residents in traveling to other states to obtain legal abortions. It doesn't say woman. There might be a case that a, came up after this article. It's, it's on SCNR. There was a there was an official from some state. It might have been Mississippi or something or Missouri. I don't know. Saying we will arrest them for doing this. There are similar laws uh, like Idaho and Washington are really interesting. Again, there one state has very lax laws and one has very strict. And uh, I remember there's a couple different disputes between the two like a, one of the governors has said no we will absolutely not prosecute women who come from idaho okay the uh this this may be it alabama attorney general That's says he has the right to too. prosecute people who facilitate travel for out-of-state abortion it's not just doctors it's anyone mm -hmm. so we'll see where that goes but let's jump to this next story so this is a story uh that we brought up last week and uh, we're going to highlight it again because we're talking about i don't know the breakdown of social order in this country it is episode Ooh. 999 of timcast irl and uh, world. there was just a, 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 sol a total solar eclipse in this country. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have here for you the Social Security Administration weekly data for Help America Vote Verification Transactions by State for the week ending March 30th, 2024. That is to say, the latest data coming out of the Social Security Administration on people who are registering to vote, who are lacking IDs, or dead. And uh, the data is shocking. In Arizona, 25,000 people attempted to register to vote without IDs. 2,669 people were not in the Social Security Administration database. 20 of them were dead. Now, that doesn't alarm me that 20 are dead. It is seemingly a large number of people who are registering. That's kind of shocking. Georgia is 14,684. Very interesting. But uh, let's take a look at Texas. Oh, Two, no. for in one week, wow. 225,132 people without IDs tried to register to vote. 30,000 of them did not have a match in the Social Security Administration database. 4,515 were dead. 194,708, I believe, were the total matches. But uh, uh, single match alive is the number we're actually looking at. These are the ones that likely were confirmed registered. It's 190,193. Now, Let's just make sure for the purpose of this video, we give you the proper context and we show what is HAVV. HAVA is the Help America Vote Act, requires states to verify information of newly registered voters for federal elections. Each state must establish a computerized statewide voter registration list and verify new voter information. That's important. New information. HAVV, which we're looking at right now, to comply with requirements of Section 303 of HAVA, Social Security Administration developed a new verification system known as the Help America Vote Verification in August 2004. States must only submit a request to us for new voters who do not present a valid driver's license during the voter registration process. HAVV verifies the accuracy of the name, date of birth, and last four digits of Social Security number submitted and sends an indication of whether our records show the individual as deceased. So let's break this down. In Texas... According to this website, 225,132 individuals submitted for a new voter registration and did not have an ID. 30,000 of them came back with no match. Perhaps some of those were accidents. Perhaps some of those were, I wrote down the wrong last four of my social or my name was misspelled. But 30,000 out of 225 coming back with no match is quite alarming. I don't know how that could happen unless these people are not in the Social Security Administration database for some reason, not citizens. 4,515 dead people tried to register in one week? So explain this to me. Does that mean that they tried to register, they went to go register, and in the time between when the the information was gathered, they died? So oh, 4,500 people died who, who were new voters. I have no idea. I guess. That's a lot of people dying. Yeah. Almost really suspiciously quickly. high. Oh, so. Suspiciously high. Yeah. What's and so uh, we're very interested in voting. No, we, we, we did cover this uh, last week, and uh, this is just the latest update of the numbers. Can the reason the reason I bring this up is because I want to say, do not be surprised if Democrats win Texas and Missouri. Can you look at California just because it's a similarly sized population? It's obviously a general three thousand one hundred and thirty seven. OK, total transactions. Eighty were dead. One thousand seven hundred and eighty four were found to be alive. 1,273 did not have a match. That's a third of the people didn't have a match? Yeah. That's raising any alarm bells for anyone? Well, how do you, did you spell your name wrong? Like, how are you not in the Social Security Administration database? I mean, I have a double first name and it's always been a problem because is it a space? Some places don't let you have a double first name. Like, I that could believe it. that there is a small percentage of errors, but over a thousand seems too high. One, I, I, I think, I think we have a One third of all California residents who registered were named Hannah Claire. They're all trying to steal my identity. And and stressful. the problem was when they were registering and they said Hannah Claire, the people just wrote down Hannah. Yeah. Even I mean, they, look, you would be so, this this was like a this has been a consistent problem for me. It's why I don't recommend double names at least in America because some states will not let you put a double name on your license, some won't accept a hyphen, like it is an issue. And so again, over a thousand seems too high to me, but just like I believe that maybe someone did register to 
to vote and then die. I just don't think it's 4,000 of them in Texas. That's too high. I think the Georgia number is interesting too. I mean, 14,000, everything that I've seen about Georgia is like 99% of people are registered to vote. So even just having those high vote totals come, like new registrations coming in in that way is interesting. It's February 17th is the most alarming one because that's where you get Missouri with 23,000 dead people trying to register to vote. How Out of 78,000. Yeah, they really yeah. screwed up by showing their hand there. They, that's like, what, a, th- a fourth of the registra- registrars were actually dead? That's insane, and that is not realistic, in my opinion. So what happens? That is more That's than why I say the FBI should be involved. This is insane. I told you, the you, FBI is too busy FBI looking at do- moms. They're too busy checking moms out who speak at school board meetings. Uh, They're very busy. Take a look at this. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Here's where it gets interesting. 270 to win. Did you guys know that Joe Biden may not be on the Ohio ballot for the general election? I did like, not we know. are getting... Crazy close to weird civil war esque, let's just call it echoes. Mm. Donald Trump didn't, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Donald Trump. Abraham Lincoln did not get a single vote in any of the Confederate states that wanted to become Confederates. And it was because the way it worked back then is that the parties would issue the party ballot of here's our list of party candidates you should vote for. And then you'd basically sign it and drop it in the box. And then it would go, okay, okay, we get it. You're Republican, so you voted for all Republicans. In the Confederate states, the, the Republican Party did not issue any ballots. They didn't think they'd get any. So Abraham Lincoln didn't get a single vote. We now have, everyone was talking about Trump being removed from the ballot. The issue is in Ohio, the deadline for uh, submitting for the general election is before the Democratic National Convention, where they name their nominee. All they have to do is preliminarily, or, or, or I guess whatever the word would be, They have to submit that Joe Biden is the nominee before the convention confirming he's the nominee. Otherwise, he will not appear on the general election ballot in Ohio. There will be no Joe Biden. Why did they schedule their convention for after this deadline? Well, take a look at this. These this is this is 270 to win. This shows the electoral vote count. And we can see these are toss up states, the ones that don't have any color. Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Georgia. Let's say this. Let's say Trump wins Wisconsin, Michigan. Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. Republicans get 312 electoral college votes. Congratulations, Trump wins. Now let's say that Texas turns blue. It's now 266 to Republicans 272. The other suspect state of court, of course, is Missouri. That would put Democrats at 276. So I wouldn't be surprised, based on the weird numbers we're seeing from the Social Security Administration, that come November, when they're counting the votes, they say, Trump won all the swing states. Congratulations. Whoa, what's this? An upset in Texas. Wow. All of those California transplants to Texas much have, uh, must have shifted the vote patterns. As we know, Beto was pretty close when he, when he was running. And it may be that we have finally seen a big shift because of the California exodus, which, of course, everybody knows there was a major exodus from California and New York into Texas. Sure, you can argue those people are more conservative leaning. They'll argue, no, they were they were Democrat leaning individuals. That makes sense. Texas goes blue. Missouri goes blue and Trump loses. Now, let's say Missouri doesn't go. Let's say Missouri stays red. They're expecting it to be red. Does anybody believe Arizona is going to go Republican? Arizona is a toss up state. But let's just say their their machines stop working like they did with Kerry Lake. Democrats, 277 to Republicans, 261. They don't need. So so why is it? There's a news report that Biden won't be on the ballot in Ohio. That shouldn't even be a possibility. You've got these the polls coming out saying Trump is ahead in all swing states. And then you look at the Social Security, Social Security Administration. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, there's 1.5 million newly registered voters in Texas who don't have IDs. So don't be surprised if this is what happens in, you know, come uh, uh, the end of the year. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just saying. Texas gives them the win. Be on your toes. If you guys are listening out there, you Biden's handlers and all you guys, you better get them on the ballot in Ohio. It's going to look real fishy. I mean, if you want to cover your tracks. You're just saying that because you're from Ohio. I'm just Ohio. saying, you, maybe you're on the other side or something. We're all on the same team here. We're trying to make a better world. So let's, you know, if you're going to cheat, do it in a secret way where <laughs> yeah. we don't know or something. So there's no The Missouri crazy thing is crazy. War. I think considering the swing state polling, they, the, look, there's a shadow campaign. If you think, that they launched a shadow campaign, according to Time Magazine, they did, in 2020, and they're not working on something now? You're nuts. This is Shadow. How did you come across these numbers, by the way, last last week? When you, the Social Security Administration? Yeah. Shout out to End Wokeness. 
I don't know if uh, on Twitter, on X, I don't know if they were the ones who actually found the data first, but they posted about it. It went massively viral. We pulled it up. And I think what they missed is that while everybody was concerned about the large number of voters with no IDs for some reason, I believe it was us that actually caught in real time on the show, 23,000 deceased people tried to register in one week. How that happens? Sure. Sure. Somebody found a box of registrations that were three or four months old and were like, why haven't these been submitted? And 23,000 people died in three months, I guess. Doesn't that seem like a lot? Yeah. Is Texas okay? No, this is Missouri. Is this Missouri okay? Whoever. Like, that seems like a lot of people. It's even more pronounced in Missouri. 20,000? And it's the ratio that a fourth, it's less than a, it's like almost a third. Yeah, it's a like two Two fifths of a of the voters just were dead. That's or two fifths of the registrants were dead already. That doesn't make or a fifth or fourth or third. Even that's all those numbers are insane. Insane. I mean, look, especially with those high numbers of the even thousand, even Arizona this past week had 25,000 registrations uh, with no IDs. I think there's a decent probability. What we're seeing is someone's got a DMV database and someone's got a voter registration database and they cross-reference and eliminate all duplications so they only get people on the DMV list who are not registered to vote and then begin registering these people on their behalf without them knowing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they don't have IDs is because if you are trying to register as someone else, you wouldn't have their ID. You wouldn't have their ID number. You wouldn't be able to. Right. Now, I do believe there is another potential uh, uh, issue here. Some have said these are illegal immigrants who are getting work permits. The interesting thing is that what this website says, uh, the Social Security Administration says, when you register to vote, they submit your paperwork to the Motor Vehicle Administration, which then runs a check to see if you have an ID. If you don't, they then kick it to the Social Security Administration. I don't know for a fact they do this for every application. It may be that if you say, I don't have an ID, they go, okay, no ID, check a box, fill in your so last four of your social, and then it bypasses the Motor Vehicle Administration, goes straight to the Social Security Administration. However, based on what they say, uh, when you when you look at it, it says the state submits the last digit of the SSN name and date of birth to the Motor Vehicle Administration for verification with SSA. Uh, if that's the case, they say the states are required to verify the driver's license number against the state MVA database. It could be that the first thing that happens is the MVA gets the paperwork, sees the name and social, runs it through the system and sees no driver's license and then says, OK, no ID, send it to SSA. If that's the case then these are people with no IDs for some reason. Mm -hmm. If it's that the MVA doesn't even bother to look up if you have an ID based on your name or social, and it goes straight to the Social Security Administration, then it could be someone is registering tons of people on their behalf secretly. Or it could just be that tons of people with no IDs have decided just today to sign up, and then it's, a lot of them die. It's that, it's that 20,000 <laughs> of 80,000. It's very dangerous for them to do this. That's even if, even if the DMV was only sending to the Social Security Administration the, the registrants that had no ID, having 20,000, having a fourth of them be dead a week later is like, what the hell's going on? That's not right. That That's that's a, an anomaly that needs to be investigated. I feel like maybe if I didn't have a valid idea, I just wouldn't register to vote in that state for a while, just to be on the safe side of not falling into the death pool. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's too it's too high of a risk. It's too high of a risk, yeah, I mean. This is a voter suppression, this is what they're doing. <laughs> it's a very subconscious voter suppression attack. No, it's not, I don't think. I don't know, man, it's freaking me out, because this that is not good. That Those Missouri numbers are not good. That is a very, very bad, bad thing to see. So um, do so you feel pessimistic? Are you pessimistic about I don't the know. election? I'm kind of riding personal. I'll let Tim answer. You're asking I don't, him. But. I don't think it matters. I think no matter what happens, no one's going to believe it. Mm. Democrats rejected 2016. Republicans rejected 2020. I don't care if you think you're right or wrong. That's not, that's not the point I'm making. The point is that this time around, you know, ain't nobody's going to accept what happens. What does that look like? I don't know. You know, uh, I can give you some uh, hypotheses. We had on this show uh, a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, a conversation as to what would happen with uh, the story was that these uh, illegal immigrants, criminal aliens attacked National Guard troops, Texas National Guard at the border to storm their way into the country. And my fear is that when the right sees this and the aftermath was that the National Guard were attacked. The people were arrested and then immediately released into this country 
on their own recognizance. And I'm like, wow, this could be the catalyst where red states and cities and Republicans say there is no longer a United States government. There is only the enclave, a rogue faction of people with guns and the people who are willing to listen to them. Because if our National Guard could be attacked by an outside group of invaders wearing masks and they were armed, these guys had weapons. They didn't use them. They had weapons and they were masked and they attacked National Guard. And the response was to stand down and let them in. What happens then in red states when a bunch of uh, conservatives just say, OK, the gov- that, that's it. Whatever you're hearing in the news now, it's just whoever has the power takes it. There's no longer a functioning government. We are not going to be protected. You got the guy, I think it's in Arizona, an old man, had someone come onto his property. Cartels were shooting at each other, something like that. He, def- he, he claims he defended himself. We're old guy. About George Allen Kelly. Is that it, the old guy? Yeah, yeah. There were people coming across his property in like camo and combat boots. And then he says that like he heard a gunshot, came out of the porch. And then later a body was discovered on his property. Now he's been charged with murder. Right. And so this is a guy who, a non-citizen, a foreign individual from another country illegally entered his property, was found dead, and they're arresting and charging him for murder. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, you're going to get a group of guys who are going to say, OK, the government's not only not going to protect us, they're going to try and kill us. And what happens when these guys then go out and set up checkpoints, when they go out, set up barricades around their town or neighborhood and say, we don't recognize their, this government anymore. Now, the interesting thing on the show was that I was told at the time by the, by the guest that it was not possible. It could never happen. It would never happen that individuals in this country would, would stop believing in the power of government. And if they ever did, the government would quickly come in and just shut them down. Which brings me to my next story. We have this story from ABC7 News video. Early morning Bay Bridge sideshow fireworks temporarily block westbound lanes. Have you guys uh, seen the videos that went viral from this? No. Yeah. Extremists, rogue actors, random crazy people took over the Bay Bridge in SF. They took it over. There's a video of a guy in his car. They're banging on the car. One guy jumps through his sunroof and he's cowering with his hands up like, please don't hurt me. Please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They rip him from his vehicle, take it and start spinning donuts on the bridge. And everyone said, where are the police? Let me see if I can uh, play some of this. Quite a sight. Overnight traffic on the Bay Bridge came to a halt. So a guy tried driving across it in the wee hours of the morning. And they took his car from him while he cowered in fear. And uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When people start believing that there is no governing authority and they have no fear for police, either because the police are impotent and unable to do anything, or they just feel that they can fight back and there's no more monopoly on violence, they'll take whatever they want. Conservatives don't behave the same way urban, I don't know what you would describe these people as, I don't know, rogue actors, criminals, gangs, or whatever. We saw this with the far left already back in 2020, when they literally took over city blocks in numerous cities and created their own autonomous zones. It's happened already. My fear is we are moving towards, especially after this election, an instance where conservatives start behaving in a similar but different way, similar in that they too decide, you know what? Maybe these gangs in San Francisco and Chicago, maybe they're right. There's no police. There's no law enforcement. There is a gang that sends agents from D.C. to attack people, but there's not that many of them. Nationally, with 327 million people, none of these people who took over a bridge that believes a federal crime have any fear whatsoever as to what could happen to them. Antifa, also none of that fear. They firebombed Cop City, a police training facility. Now, many of them have been charged at the state level, but the feds don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. What happens when people on the right in rural areas say, yeah, they're right. There's no government anymore. We better do it ourselves. It's like tried that in a small town. Isn't that what that what that went around? I well, try that in a small town. I mean, is that what you're talking about? Like people militias in towns? Well, stop. Try that in a small town was basically pointing the finger at Antifa. And saying, if you come here, we'll defend ourselves. Right. What I'm saying is what happens when just like these people think cops can't do nothing about nothing. Federal agents drive up to a small town of 4000. And before they can even get into the town, they're greeted by two guys in in body armor with rifles and helmets. And they put their hands up and say, what can we do for you? And the feds say, 
you can get out of her way and says, sorry about that. You got to turn right around right now. You're not welcome in this place. And they say, well, you, you, we're federal agents. We have badges. And they laugh and they say, you got 10 seconds to turn around. The right will act very differently to the way the left does. We saw this with like the, Bun- the, the Bundy standoff where you actually had, a, there's a photo of a guy pointing a rifle down, looking over from the bridge. My fear is that, I mean, this, this stuff out of, out of San Francisco is, is, is just absolutely insane. People across the, around the world can see that there is no more social order in this country. Isn't that the point though? I mean, to weaken, Perhaps. you know, to weaken America to the point where, you know, world government looks, I guess, appealing because we just can't handle ourselves anymore. But what happens when the right adopts the same lack of confidence? You don't think that exists right now? You mean they're, they just act on it? I would say right now, conservatives, the way they like we're going to get Mike Johnson in and then we're going to pass it. We're going to block this, the bill while Republicans are screaming and begging for Congress. You've got elements of the left firebombing buildings, killing people in the streets. You've got gangs. I don't want to call them leftists. They're just gangs. These are, these are, these are, this is a city where gangs have just taken over. They, and, and it's not the only time we've seen these street takeovers. They happen all over the place. Police do nothing. They're, they're, how can how can a police department stop 3000 people who have taken over a street? I was thinking in this situation, if you I don't know how long it takes for the National Guard to spin up, but you block the bridge on both sides. You have all your guns pointed at the bridge from all angles. You may even bring a tank out. But then what would that do? A standoff? And then would people get shot and killed? And that would be like a probably ugly, ugly scene. Yeah, because I was then, like, this crowd is rowdy. They might charge the people like run at them. To, you'd have to bring in. I don't know what, 20 city buses to load them all up in cuffs with cops on each one. And then where do you put them? And it's like, like, that's the people don't understand this. And is when, this San Francisco like they're going to release them again, right? I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the other issue. They're operating the assumption that National Guard would actually arrest these people. The question is, where do they go? People live in movies. They do not understand. Think about how many people live in San Francisco. Think about how many police are in San Francisco. How many military National Guard are in the area? There are, what, 10 to 1 civilian to government force personnel. I mean, across all from military, National Guard, federal law enforcement, local law enforcement sheriffs, 10 to 1. If you have thousands of civilians, you don't have a facility to hold them. What are they going to do? I was just thinking about in vi- all the video games I've played over the years where you have a piss poor leader and then your countries, the countries with piss poor leaders just start having revolutions and riots. And I'm like, why do they lose the people lose loyalty when the when the leader is terrible? Like the impotence of Joe Biden to step up to put some authority behind like the protection of its citizens is like it's and Trump did the same thing during these riots like after uh george floyd died day two dude national guard red alert and they, where were they he waited and waited and it got worse and worse and it's like i know you don't want to seem like a fascist dictator that you're the one that's blamed for the national four dead in Ohio. i was i went to kent state for you know four kids got killed by the national guard pro, vietnam protest in 1970 and may 4th it was freaking tragic and that times 10 no one wants to have their name on that but at the same time if you do nothing it gets bigger and then it gets bigger and they take a little and then they take a little and then all of a sudden you've got an actual revolution so you need to do something to stop this my concern is that the only faction of people in this country right now who actually believe it exists are trump supporters actually believe what exists the country oh oh okay the Democrats think the Supreme Court should be uh, a variety of things, dissolved, expanded. It's illegitimate. They uh, support the autonomous zones, mm-hmm. the suspension of rights in certain areas. They, they do not believe in the Constitution. They call this country white supremacist. They pushed the uh, 1619 project. They despise this country and they don't want it to exist. Agreed. They're teaching our children to <clears throat> hate this country. Then you have roving gangs of people who don't care whether it does or doesn't. Mm. And then you have Trump supporters waving their little flags being like, we love America. You asked earlier, what do conservatives do when uh, if they get fed up with the system and they they lose confidence in the system? And a, po- a positive thing that I've seen, I don't know if all of them are conservatives. People will say, you're not doing it, so I'm going to do it. And they'll build systems that the government can't do, like free software social networks, things that are replicable among the masses without any kind of oversight. We'll build our own water pipes. If you're not going to give us water and you're going to, we'll have to build our own water pipes then. Okay. But it's not always a conservative person, but those are people that are willing to conserve the nature of reality. 
they're willing to make their own to keep things going. I'm happy to be a part of that movement by building mines, things like that, you know? Yeah, I think it is an interesting um, balance between people who have sort of um, a loyalty and maybe an optimism about what, I mean, that's the whole MAGA movement, right? Make America Great Again, versus the sort of very serious power of people who enjoy destruction, right? Like, if you don't believe in your country and you're willing to destroy it and see everything around you crumble, then you are actually in some ways more powerful because there you don't feel the need to preserve anything. Preserving things is more difficult. In oh, my absolutely. Opinion. Building things is harder than destroying them. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's absolutely. talking about life, like this nihilism. Do you guys ever get waves of nihilism? It's been creeping in and out of me over the last five months, two years. Is that what you think the months? like bridge thing is? Just nihilism? People. This thing, like, people yeah. that just don't care about if it, if they die tomorrow, they're just out for a nice piece of food. Yeah, I think a lot of that is. I don't. I don't. I don't think these people are smart enough to understand nihilism or the feelings of nihilism. They just are nihilistic. They I don't, just think don't so. have any. Do they have a vision of the future? If they don't, then they're nihilistic. Or just impulsive. I, I, I disagree. I think to be nihilist requires some kind of philosophical understanding. These people are just like, oh, wow, so fun. Oh, man, they're, they're not thinking anything. They live in the moment, in the next five minutes. When I mean, you talk to teachers about it and the way that kids engage, they just, they don't, they're not making long-term plans. They're not thinking about what they're going to do right. in the future. It's just five, entertain me for five minutes, entertain me the, for five minutes. These are not people who are going, man, nothing matters. So I'm going to go on a bridge and do a sideshow. Yeah, these are no. people who are like, yo, all the boys are going to drive their cars. Let's go. That's, that's what they're thinking. It's very short-term impulsivity. But, but also this is their mission in their life. Like, their community is a bunch of people who do sideshows and show up, and that's that's their culture. So that's I would say that's the opposite of nihilism. The the there's many leftists who are nihilistic, and they're actually people who are like, I sat here and I thought about it, and I couldn't find a reason to live, so screw it. These these people are just having fun. Mm -hmm. Yolo. Just short term thinking people. Like no, I guess look, there's look, a lot look. of those people. Why do you play guitar? Because I like it. Why do they do sideshows? Because they, they like, like it. I guess they that's like it. it. It also, it sounds good and it heals me when it vibrates. There's a lot of reasons. And, and they're there's useful. Like, they're very useful. I mean, there's a number of reasons why this is happening. Are they testing different choke points in different areas? I think that they're driven to do certain things. You know, I don't even think they know why they're doing. They're just useful outer circle idiots. Yeah. Like, are we going to be able to take the bridge next time? Like, yeah. you think they're testing the waters? Yeah, I think they're doing it in a lot of different places. You see it across the country in major like transportation areas. I mean, I'm sure that there's someone that's saying like, you know, let's just see what this looks like and, and you drive people out to do oh, things. You sense then, it's more organized? Um, I think that there are like seeds that are planted. I, I absolutely think that um, in like, they're learning lessons constantly. They learn lessons in 2020 about how far they could go and what they could get away with. Um, I mean, I think uh, ultimately making America a weak country um, so that the people can be controlled is the goal. I mean, we see it. I, that, I, that's, I, I can't think of any other reason why we don't teach kids how to read or do math in school. I mean, if, if you know, they're reliant on the government, that's a good thing for the left. Um, but I do think that a lot of this is strategic and just trying to see how they can navigate in some of the cities maybe for what this summer looks like. I don't know. You have, you have dour predictions about the summer? You don't think it's going to be good? I think it's probably going to be violent. I mean, I think in like the Chicago area, you know, I mean, during the convention, I think we'll see some violence this summer, unfortunately. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to. I'm a mom. It's hard, you know, as a nation, you see a nation breaking down and watching people fighting and so much conflict. The kids are being kind of pitted against each other in school. How do you talk about, you know, the state of America with your kids? Like, are your kids more optimistic than most? Are they still looking to just be entertained every five minutes? Like, where does this fit in? Yeah, I think m most pa people who have children um, are pretty optimistic about the future. I think you kind of have to be or a stakeholder in the future. You engage in an interesting way. Um, and so how do you talk about the future with your kids? I mean, um, in a positive manner, you know, I and mean, you're not going to fill your, you know, but my kids know what I do and they, they're watching what's happening and the kids, you know, they see the news, they're on social media. I have teenagers. Um, I think they're concerned. They're worried um, about, you know, the, I'm sorry. Uh, I think they're. I, I think that they are concerned to a certain degree. Certainly, my you know older teenagers are watching what's happening across the country. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and my kids will tell me I have a son in private school. He's. I mean, excuse me, in public school. I have two. My youngest two, I moved out of public school, but still one. And I'll tell me all the time, like, Mom, there are kids in my class that can't even read. How old is he? Sixteen. Sophomore. There was a scandal. I was when I was in college, but there was um, 
there were football players at University of Connecticut that couldn't read. That's horrible. But they were there on like an athletic scholarship. Like this is the system that we currently have in education. It seems awful to me. Yeah. How do you have only 14% of kids reading in eighth grade and the graduation rates like 87%? Like reading remediation isn't happening in those grades like that. It's just graduation inflation. They're graduating all these kids and then they're well, out, you know, doing I, donuts on the Bay Bridge. I think public schooling has, has been a scam literally the entire time. I don't think That's there right. was ever a period in which public schooling was good. Back Fair to like enough. John Dewey, when John Dewey started the public school system mm -hmm. to make people good little uh, factory workers, wait for the bell. Don't speak until you're called upon. Military, get ready to join the military when you're out of here. Sit still, be silent, follow orders. Like that's, they turned, they, they like in the 1920s or something that they Yeah, that. I'm not gonna sit here and like defend the origins of public education or what it wanted to achieve. I just think right now it's a, it's a really key piece. And like you talk about the culture war, Tim, and about, you know, how do you win a culture where you engage in the culture? And I think for a long time, conservatives haven't engaged in some of these areas. And so um, with the schools, we have to engage because we'll lose our country eventually if we don't. It doesn't matter what we do. If the schools continue the way they are, then Is it, we lose the country. You think it's because there's too many kids and there's not enough teachers? Um, Why no. they're just shoving kids through without making sure they can read? Like they don't have enough attention? I, I think no. the problem is schools shouldn't exist. They're just poorly constructed, organized, like they're just boring as hell. I mean, I thought it was boring as it hell. It should all be pod based. Schooling in this country should all be like small every scale. super small scale of like local parents taking turns like hey. farmhouse style kind of. Yep. Yeah. And the problem is that we just decided to give up responsibility for raising our children. Yep. So uh, the example I often cite is you go back a hundred years and the son works with the dad. Dad goes to work and the kid goes to help him. Nowadays, dad goes to work and kid has no idea what his dad does. And then the dad comes home and says, what'd you do in school? And he was like, nothing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what do you get? It's obvious. You get generation for, you, you do this for three generations. You get a generation of people who have learned nothing from the past. They've acquired no skills. You know, what, what, uh, someone super chatted us. The reason why the boat crashed into the Francis uh, Scott Key Bridge is because boomers weren't passing anything down to the next generation. It's it's uh, uh, one of the first generations, probably starting with the greatest generation, actually, where and, and maybe because of the war that kids separated from their parents, just isolated. And then you get the first massive expansion of that with boomers. And uh, typically the boomers are having millennial kids, but some some younger Gen X and stuff like that. But th these millennials, I mean, I think about how how I grew up and all my friends grew up. We did not. Well, I actually would say I was fortunate enough that I worked at the family business. My mom opened a coffee shop and I worked there on the weekends with my family. And I think that was massively beneficial to me and no in, in helping me you know, run a business and, and things like that. But the average person, I mean, my friends were going out riding their bikes at 13 while their dad and mom were working or doing whatever. They were literally doing no work. Then they get older and they're like, I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything. They don't know what their parents did. They don't know how to do anything related to finance. And they're left in their 20s when they should be getting married and having kids completely clueless as to how the world works. Did you make your kids get jobs? Yeah, my kids. All, well, I don't make them. They like to. They like to have money. And, you know, my son is very uh, industrious young man. He started with a window washing business and that was very good. So, yeah, we. I mean, they like to have money and they, you know, we live in a place where they can kind of have a little bit of independence and we encourage that. How so. old were they when they started working? Um, oh, my daughter started babysitting at like probably 11 or 12. Yeah. That's a good age to start working. Yeah, That's when it was I started great. at 12. I started walking a dog, the mm -hmm. neighbor's dog. Yep. Just a simple local family job, babysitting. One of the working. best arguments, um, there was, we had this bill in Florida that they wanted to ban social media for 15 and 14 year olds. And um, I had a dad come forward and one of the best arguments I heard against doing that was his son had a business. And he said, my son advertises using social media. This is part of, you know, I, I encourage capitalism in my home. And he's like, I really don't want the government to tell me that he can't do that because it's healthy for him at the age of 15. That was really interesting. That is interesting. I fully agree with that. I cannot stand these people trying to ban the internet for kids. Ban this stuff. Like, per, no, police your children. No, you it's not the government's it's job. A, yeah, it's a parenting issue. Yeah. I think it. I issue. think right now companies are incentivized to have children on at an early age. Uh, you think like kids should be allowed to go to porn stores? No, of course not. Then why should they be allowed on the internet? You want to ban kids from the internet yes. completely? Yep, 100%. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, my, to my, my issue with HB1 
was um, that uh, it, w- it was specifically focused on uh, a couple apps, and it was for 15 and 14 year olds, no parental authorization uh, included in it. Um, and I asked uh, someone who was very close to the bill, I said, how do the kids access the apps? And they said, well, um, I, I, and they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, on, on a PC? And he said, well, no, of course not. They, uh, they you know, access it on a phone. And I said, okay, so phones are really bad for kids. I mean, we know that. So should we just say that kids can't have phones? Yes. Okay. So the other the other uh, answer, which may be the better compromise, is that websites are required to ID verify if they're containing uh, uh, illicit materials. We need to assess whether or not social media is an is an addic- is an is addictive and destructive, like nicotine or any other substance. We know that Instagram, for instance, increases levels of depression. Or I should say, there are numerous studies that women develop, de- uh, young girls get depressed, less so boys, but young people generally experience social anxiety and depression sure. because of likes and because of shares. They're not getting enough followers, things like that. And it's intentionally designed to be addictive. Ian actually can attest to this, having worked on Minds.com. Yeah, we founded had it. plenty of conversations about how addictive should we make it? It's like a slot machine. And I yeah. thought like it's 83% too unethical. I feel like that's really unethical to make it that addictive. Like I I don't so, want to make it addictive, but then the company fails if it's not addictive. So you've got to make it addictive to get them keep coming back. So sure. we, we have a form of digital fentanyl, digital drugs, mm-hmm. getting kids hooked and addicted. There's no ID requirements. So children can literally go into any app and download. I'm not just talking about porn. They can download snuff mm-hmm. and they can watch people get screwdrivers jammed into their skulls with hammers. Wow. The moral argument I make and, is that I think, oh. You but, but so here's the issue with, with keeping kids off the internet in general. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it's like you got to be 13. Perhaps it's uh, if a, a website is going to be displaying, like you go to the movies, NC-17. You got to have an ID. Yeah, but apparently America's just forgotten that, Tim, like like age appropriateness. I mean, it's, movie ratings are a perfect example. It's very clear. They're very direct about what's included and how they're rated. And then on the internet, a kid can go on a website and watch a murder happen. So instead of saying, let's do nothing, either we, we pull a big ask, which is anyone under the age of 13 is banned from internet access. And of course, they'll still find ways to get it. Doesn't matter. Then we just hold responsible whoever was giving access. Like if an adult gives a kid a snuff video, the adult gets in trouble. Then we can say 14, 15, and 16 require some kind of parental approval for access. And then, or we compromise and say websites are required if they're going to be presenting NC-17 materials to verify the identification of the individual absorbing those materials. Otherwise, they will be held criminally responsible. And I think that's happening now. You're seeing age verification for pornography at 18. Um, the issue with, some, with that bill for, for us um, and, and for me was really there was no parental authorization piece. And, I, and I'm really concerned about the government, what the government can and can't deal, tell you to do with your kids. Right now, they're supporting kids getting healthy body parts cut off. And they'll tell you that they have a lot of studies that say that kids will kill themselves if you don't let them do right. that. Right. And so um, I just kind of look at that and, and I want I want all of the policy to be really in service of fundamental rights, protecting our fundamental rights, certainly as a parent, that the government doesn't give you those rights and then, you know, be in service of limited government. Um, so I think there are a lot of questions to ask, I think, because of tech accelerating so quickly um, that we need to be aware of all of the different ways it's touching our lives and try to try to have good policy, because there's a real um <clears throat> I think that there's a real sense of urgency for people to start making legislation around this, but that can bring some really bad policy too. I think the challenging thing for us is that nobody uh, nobody wants to quit the drugs. Mm. You know, uh, how is it that someone who's addicted to a substance decides that they're going to stop? Purpose. That's how I do it. Or they hit rock bottom, right? Like things get really bad and they're like, I have to try and, and change this thing, which for teenagers, the cost of being addicted to the internet is is high. Yeah. And so for people who say do drugs, they're doing hard drugs, they're addicted, let's say heroin or something. Perhaps it's rock bottom. I don't know that it's true. Some people just die. They they no matter what their family does, they try to get them help. But if you read anything about like narcotics anonymous and stuff like that, it's people themselves have to choose to stop and there's nothing you can do. You can certainly talk to them. You can persuade them. You can explain to them what it's doing. You can have interventions. But the change only happens when that individual decides they have to change and they seek help themselves. So the issue I see with that is when it comes to gambling, there are 12 casinos within two to three hours from where we are right now. Twelve. 
That is insane. Absolutely insane. People are going to keep voting to allow allow other people to engage in harmful, pleasurable short term activities until they disintegrate. I think you, your illusion or your metaphor with the Internet and drugs is interesting. And there are a lot of drugs on the Internet in that way, your mental drugs. But the, I, I personally, I feel like the Internet is a is a greater boon than it is a drawback for society. And that honestly, in the future, our children are going to be the ones that build a better system. Like Thomas Jefferson was 26. There's going to be some 14 year olds in a chat room crafting a new constitution or amendments to the constitution. And they'll be giving. So if we, if we, if we ban them from the process of learning on the internet, that could be really, really, it would just, just really solidify the power structure that's already here and that wants to be here. And I, I have a lot of faith in the children of humanity, but I do believe guidance is necessary. And that's why I, I put that on the parents. I just like to see a lot more energy being put into the idea of supporting like good parenting and working together. Like, you know, at what age should a child to get a cell phone? Like, I, again, the only way out is through. So let's have honest conversations about it. How is it really affecting kids? What would be an appropriate age? Can we talk? You know, I, I spoke at a, an event about TikTok and I said, OK, parents, you can wait for the government to ban TikTok or you can just take it off your kid's phone. And then if I take it off and you take it off, then we're all mean together. But nobody, none of the kids have TikTok in our, in, even in your own small community. Start there. To your point of the schoolhouse idea, you know, make I that gotta, change happen at that point. I actually, I got a better idea for you. Okay. Join TikTok. And use it? Because yeah. it was amazing how they utilized TikTok to get out supporters. Is there oh. any way that the, the left, that the right can do that? Yeah. Like, what you do is you tell your kids... Oh, you're you're really it. excited that you're on TikTok now too, and you're going to start adding their friends. Instead of Moms for Liberty. TikTok. And then you start doing the corniest things, and you, you embarrass come them. on every like single three. one of their yep. friends' posts. And you say, when when Johnny first had <laughs> the biggest idea. snot bubble in his face, and we all laughed, it was so cute. You should see him when he gets mad because he can't have extra scoops of ice cream. They would just gonna, run for the hills. They, they would, they would, they would be Facebook, like, off Facebook, yeah. they, they'd lose it. What's it happened with Facebook? Yeah. Once everyone's parents started joining, they were like, I don't want to be on this because now you're like you're in college or you're like in, in high school. Yeah. And your mom comments on your like this girl you're crushing on. And, and she's like, it was so cute when he, you know, when he was a little baby. Here's a picture of him as a baby. He still stuck his, stuck his thumb until age 11. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He wet his bed till he was eight. Yeah, they're gonna go. Like, oh my god! It's a good strategy. I'm. I, I think I'm. I'm gonna go back and, and speak to the moms <laughs> about that. TikTok's gonna be like, stop! Get the moms off. That's right. Yeah. Did you guys do moms? moms did you TikTok. guys? Were you on there? Yeah. Moms for Liberty. Was it on TikTok? No, we're not on TikTok. Just be, I mean, because I, I I'm not a big TikTok fan. How do you feel about it ethically? Just the entire process of TikTok. What do you mean? I mean like what, China well, it's a Chinese stuff? company, ByteDance, which is kind of beholden to the CCP, yeah. running a social network in our in our country sure. with proprietary code. It's concerning. I think it's valid. But I mean, you know, Thomas Massey got up when he was speaking about it and he was like, everybody's phones from China. Why aren't we talking about anything else? We're talking about TikTok specifically. I, you know, I think that there um, I think there's a broader conversation to happen about China in general and, and how we move forward. But I guess it's a good conversation starter. Everything has to be sexy now in order for us to talk about it, it has to be like controversial. And but TikTok. With the TikTok thing, they were like, let's ban it. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't think that's the right move because then that's going to give them authority to ban other stuff. I'm like, just make them free their software code if they want to operate in the States so that we all have access to it. And they'll say no. They'll shut down in the United States if you do that. You'll get your ban. But Or they'll show you their code and you'll be like, wow, they were spying and they were moving data directly to the seas through all these things. And look how they tweaked your algorithm when you said that word, stuff like that, which would be benef super beneficial to humanity in the United States. I hope they go that route. I hope they go that route. It's just about, I think, bringing awareness to Congress and letting them understand the idea of free software. And, and open source code and verifying algorithms and things. Is Brazil banning X? Is that actually happening? This is nuts. We should talk about this. Did you get any follow up? If you guys got any follow up? So apparently the, 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 was it the attorney general and the president of Brazil are like, take down all these accounts on X, Elon. Or, and he's like, no. And they're like, these are people are considered like felons in Brazil. I don't want to, I don't want to. So well, this, here's, story. here's a story from CBS news, Brazil Supreme court investigating Elon Musk over obstruction and disinformation on X. They say a crusading Brazilian Supreme Court justice included Elon Musk as a target in an ongoing investigation over the dissemination of fake news and opened a separate investigation late Sunday into the executive for alleged obstruction. In his decision, Justice Alexandre de Moraes noted that Musk on Saturday began waging a public disinformation campaign regarding the top court's actions and that Musk continued the following day most notably with comments that his social media company X would cease to comply with the court's orders to block certain accounts. 
Quote, the flagrant conduct of obstruction of Brazilian justice, incitement of crime, the public threat of disobedience of court orders and future lack of cooperation from the platform are facts that disrespect the sovereignty of Brazil, he wrote. Musk will be investigated for alleged intentional criminal instrumentalization of acts as part of an investigation into a network of people known as digital militias who allegedly spread defamatory fake news and threats against Supreme Court justices, according to the text of the decision. The new investigation will look into whether Musk engaged in obstruction, criminal organization and incitement. So there's people on X that are apparently, allegedly spreading mis or disinformation about the justices of Brazil, the Supreme Court justices of Brazil. And so they want those people banned off X. And Elon's like, they're not saying anything illegal in the United States, which is where we're based. So we're not going to ban them. And now I don't know what's going to happen. Normally what happens in this situation is the country just blocks X. Brazil will just block it in the country. I mean, that's normally what China does. So I don't know. It's a horrible look for Brazil if they were to do something like that. Yeah, Elon announced he'd remove all restrictions from, from Brazil now because he was like, screw him. Free yeah. speech. Interesting. Yep. He's fighting in Australia too, my friend Chris Elston. Um, yep. That tweet, I think it was like a $800,000 fine or something that they wanted to, and Elon, they're fighting it. In court. That was I mean, I'm crazy. Thankful. What was that? Um, what was it? It was misgendering maybe. I think it was Bill, around- Billboard like, Chris people. tweeted uh, like a story from the Daily Mail and it was like a sentence. It's like yeah. it was like one sentence. And uh, they said that it was intentionally hateful and misgendering of a person. So it had to be pulled. And because Elon's like, I'm not going to do it. They're finding. So it just reminded me that toilet paper in the shot the entire show. Apparently, <laughs> I blow my nose from time to time. It's been such a great conversation starter in Australia, though. Like the story is huge. Uh, Chris is actually going there. He's going to fly out to Australia and he's getting a ton of support. So wow. I think a lot of this stuff is sometimes, you know, you make lemonade with it. It gets the information out and then maybe we can advance. There it are people around the world who want to normalize GDP. They want to basically homogenize the planet. And it's horrible. Imagine every downtown, a McDonald's, a Starbucks. Ugh, every tourist location you go to is just Hard Rock Cafe, Bubba Gump Shrimp and Dolce or something. J. Crew. That? Maybe and that's then, how they stop people from flying places to save carbon or whatever, because everywhere is the same. So why go anywhere? Well, the way they do that is by having planes fall apart. Mm, oh gosh, you see that, that Boeing thing? Oh it's working my gosh. on twofold right now. What happened? The Southwest one with the, the I know it's just the engine cover. I, I don't know. People are like, it was just the engine cover. It's not a big deal. It's a big deal. Like you're watching <laughs> it's just the, the engine thing just fall coming and, off. And, of and people are like, this stuff happens all the time. It's just that no one ever talks about it on the internet. BS do we've had the internet for 20 years. There was just this expose. You would know about this stuff. Did yeah, you people, see we've had the ubiquity of smartphones and, and phone cameras since 2000, what, five or six? Yeah. People have had flip phones where they could take pictures. And if this stuff was happening, you dude, if you were on a plane it. and the engine cover blew off, there'd be 20 pictures of it. That's what happened. And they're like, nah, it happens all the time. Dude, I worked I worked at O'Hare. I worked for American Eagle Airlines. Not once in the two years I worked there did anything happen in any of the periphery of, of where I was working. The, the terminals next to me on either side and the flights I worked on, never did we get any word or witness anything related to door panels blowing off or engine covers breaking off or wheels breaking. There there, there were sometimes maybe like a, a landing gear error of some sort. We saw those. I will shout out in Midway Airport, a Southwest plane hit the runway and Midway's crazy. Midway Airport is in a residential neighborhood. It makes no sense to me. It's surrounded by houses. And it's a mile and a half. It's a, a, a it's one square mile. It's got a mile and a half of runway. So when you take off from Midway, the, they lock the brakes, jam the engines to full blast, and then release the brakes, and you go boom like a rocket to take off. Fun. So the plane landed, skidded on ice, and then cr and ripped through the wall and crashed onto uh, was it Central Avenue, I believe. And so we like we were all right there because that's where we lived when it happened. And we we like looked down the street. You could see this plane in the middle of the road. Crazy. But that is a plane crash due to ice. It wasn't like the plane broke or anything. So then I ended up getting a job at O'Hare. We never saw anything like this. There were instances where you would see the me metallic tape over hardware or whatever. That was normal, but it was never really indicative of anything. Some people would freak out. Why is there duct tape on my plane? And we'd be like, that's like, it, it doesn't mean anything. Now we're getting all these crazy stories where doors blow off. Oh landing gears are failing. We just had the engine cover blow off. Yeah, I think there's a problem with maintaining these these people these planes. Are, they're concerned from what I've heard and read and listened uh, that people are concerned that DEI, 
you know, diversity, equity, inclusion is getting people that are unqualified to come in here and build these things. And did you see that whistleblower that like, I don't know, a month ago when it, it was a Boeing, he was about to- he get shot. Kill, yeah, he that, got killed. Yeah. And they called it a suicide. He was about to testify for Boeing and he had he all this- in the middle of testifying. He'd been there for 30 yeah. years and he's like, it's not safe working condition. Yeah, he was about, yeah, he was in the middle of testifying mm-hmm. and he was about to sue Boeing too, I heard, uh, mm-hmm. or he was in the process of, of litigating against He was them. doing his depositions and, and there, he had maintained his whistleblower statements for years. And yeah. then in the middle of doing the depositions, he suddenly- and Boeing was no longer with us. Boeing's military industrial complex all the way. They're not passenger jets. That's a small part of their business. They're mainly weapons manufacturing. And, and for the as far as I know, I, I haven't done the numbers to know exactly. But as far as I can tell, that's a big part of their, their business. You, know, you mess around with that. You're messing around with the, the most powerful thing on earth. But there's like undercover video of people being like, being asked, would you fly on one of these workers that are there at the factory working? They're like, hell no, I wouldn't fly on one of these. It's not safe. They're saying the stuff like that. Like, ah, nah, I ain't getting on one of those. And I was like, Come on, how bad can it be? I've got this like bias of like, it's only going to get better. Things don't get worse. They just get better. Look at the last 20 years. Look at the technology. But like, if you don't upkeep things, they don't get better. They fall apart. And I think that's part of what we're seeing at Boeing, unfortunately. That's interesting. Yeah, couple that with no skilled workers, right? That can go, I mean, again, we're talking about only a third of kids reading on grade level. I, you, you invite me on the show, Tim, I'm going to talk about education because it's a passion to me. I can't believe we're like condemning kids to a life of struggle and crime in third grade. It's horrible. Uh, it's criminal, actually, and it's fraud because it's like eight hundred forty billion dollars a year that we spend doing it. Um, but yeah, who? I mean, who's going to go and work on the planes? Who's going to build the bridges? Who's going to build beautiful things? So, wh- what would you do to fix our education system? Would you like Start, teach kids it, to read? You yeah, I mean, um, that's the goal always. But ha- who's doing that? Small pod think, schools or yeah, school? I think uh, when possible, the pod schools, homeschooling, if you can do it, and it's and and it, that you can make that a priority in your lives. And and for young people, if you're watching me and you're thinking to yourself, like I don't know what to do, like figure out how you're going to have a family, and one of you is going to be able to be with the kids and and to to teach them. Right? Don't get yourself into a situation where you can't do that. But in the public school system. It needs to be, um, you know, the the federal Department of Education needs to be dismantled, um, and we need to put the power back down into the states where it should be, um, and the priority should be teaching kids to read. We should incentivize um, making sure that kids are learning to read, if nothing else. So, um, mom, right now, just had a little baby. Should she just read to the kid now? It's a little infant. Maybe read doesn't even all respond. The ta- read all the time. Yeah, read to the baby before you have the baby. Okay. Because the baby listens to your voice and, you know, it's incredibly important to read to your kids because they learn a lot of words and um, that really will help them in, in their vocabulary later in life. And play memory. And play memory. Great game. Helps, helps with memory and visualization. Oh, I love that game. As well as, uh, it's not just about memory, it's about visualization. Have you ever heard of a game called Rat Attack Cat? Mm-mm. Oh, it's a really fun game. What is that? Uh, it's a card game where uh, you get four cards, you get to look at the outer two. And then you can't look at them again. Uh, and then you have to swap. You can swap. It's it, it's a fun game. But memory, it's kind of like a memory game for it. You can, I, we play it with the kids. But Mark and I, my husband and I, will like make a drink on a Friday night and play. I had um, Super Mario Brothers 3. And uh, in Mario 3, sometimes the mushroom spawns. And if you go to the mushroom, you might get the game of memory. Where if you match items, you get the item into your inventory. I remember this my brother playing. And so eventually, not only... Did we get good at the memory itself where it's like, uh, actually, let me see if I can pull this up so people get an understanding of it. The Mario 3 memory bonus. So this is like, this is a video game I would play as a kid. And this is really great. You, you get, I mean, most people probably know Mario 3. So if you're old enough, you'll know what this is. These little N cards and uh, with a spade on it. And when you, you flip over two of them, if you match them, you get. 10 coins. So, and I think you only get, if you fail twice. The memory uh, game's over. Then yeah, you and lose, you lose right? the bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's it's not, I think, I don't think they, sh- they, they don't show you where everything is first though. But what happens is eventually we played so much, we actually memorized the patterns. Of the rotation. Because oh. there was only like, there were only like eight different actual games. Yeah. So what we would do is we would always go down to the bottom left, like this one right here. The second oh, and the then you left. know which one it was. Yeah, and depending on what it was, we would go, okay, now I know which one it is. Yeah. And then we would start going, bum, 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 and just mm-hmm. getting all the items. But uh, playing memory with your kids is, is, Dude, is really great. me and my brother, that's one of the great things about having siblings too, especially when they're close in age. Me and my brother, we would just play the hell out of that game. And it was all about who could collect the most pairs, yeah. who could get two. There were no like bad ones, which would be cool to introduce like a villain in memory. Maybe not for little, little kids because you you're just training memory. You're not worried about good and bad yet. 
but in, in like Slay the Spire, another video game, they have a similar thing. But there's things you don't want to get to that you've got to kind of be like, I That's know. That's in Ratatouille Cat. It's the same. You have rats and cats and you want the low cards. It's fun. It's a good yeah. game. I'm going to send you Ratatouille Great Cat. Great right. freaking game. That and building blocks, man. Just, I don't know what about having building cardboard building blocks and being able to build little palaces around mm. yourself. Was only for cool. boys, though. Girls, just give them dolls. Yeah, oh, girls can only play with dolls and dishes, fake dishes they can learn to wash. What's wow. your take on that, on, on like the weird. gendered raising of children? Did you notice with the girls it was different? Did you force anything or did you just... Yeah, um, I, I, I think no child's born in the wrong body. And um, I certainly, I mean, my daughter had, you know, dolls. Did the boys play with her toys? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, she got a kitchen. It was all pink and purple. The boys played in the kitchen. It was pink and purple. I didn't think that I needed to like chop off their penis and stop their natural development. Yeah, if I had sisters know? and they had Barbies, I would have meshed them in with my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for sure. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. And, and, and to be honest, to be fair, like there are like some of the Barbies in my house have met a horrible demise. Mm. There have been experiments that have happened. It melting how flammable barbies are yeah. anybody yeah. smash head, like... i mean i feel like that's just a, a stage you know yeah so funny. i mean i think boys in general like in my experience one girl three boys boys are just more destructive in general they like to you know mess stuff up get dirty you know break stuff take stuff apart that's just been my yeah. general experience but i i mean if my daughter wanted to do that i would have let her do it too so you know mm -hmm. i i I do like breaking things apart to see what they're made of. Yeah, they love that. That's the best thing. Did, Everything gets taken apart. Did you have to teach him how to not break it apart, but how to disassemble it? So My husband can... did. Yeah, he had to actually use some of the tools to take things apart. Yeah. But That's they've cool. done cool stuff. They built skateboards. They've done like the, you know, um, yeah, they've done some interesting stuff. They built, they cool. did, made a guitar together. So. Oh, cool. Very yeah. cool. Wow, they cut the wood and everything? Yeah, my husband did that with Whoa, them. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Neat. It's beautiful. And my 14-year-old plays, so... Oh, that's great. The same guitar they built? Yeah, he plays that one. He just got a new one for Christmas. I wanted to ask you, well, we're going to go to Super Chats pretty quick. Maybe we could talk about Moms for Liberty some more on the after show a little bit, because I know you're here in town to go speak. But what is it you're speaking for exactly? So people know on the main show too. So Weaponization of the Government uh, Symposium at Heritage Foundation, where we'll talk about the fact that the American government is being used against um, the people. Uh, to control them and their actions. And it's just pretty wild. You have moms and dads across the country that get up at school board meetings and their mics are being shut off and then they're being called domestic terrorists and the FBI is contacting them. And it's shocking. You know, we whistleblowers that say they're supposed to be taking down license plate numbers of all the parents that are in the wow. school board meeting. That's crazy. Well, let's go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with all your friends, and head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and support our work directly because this show is made possible thanks in part to viewers like you. As a member, you'll get access to the uncensored members only show coming up at 10 p.m. on TimCast.com. It'll be fun. Not so family friendly, but informative. But uh, for now, we'll read your super chats. Alpha Turkey says, one day till all white fit from Tim for 1000 episode. Literally not happening. But if they will it, maybe you will. All white. Tim Jake says, guess no one Tim wanted to jump in, style. so I'll be first. Well, unfortunately, you were second. What if someone super chats you $10,000? Would you wear all white? No. Why not? Because I don't have an all white outfit. I could maybe it's give like you sad. some of it. If, they, if, if, if someone, I don't think, you, first of all, you can only super chat to 500 bucks. Oh. But uh, if chat revenue hit $10,000 by the end of this show, I will seek out an identical version of this outfit in white. That'd be yes. amazing. And the, and the, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Go for great. it. Yeah. Make it happen. That'd be this a cool 1,000 show. Power. That'd be awesome. There's yeah. no way it can be done by tomorrow. I got a white shirt you wear. It'll That's take it'll it'll, it'll take at least a week to oh, put together. I like a challenge. There's We could totally do that outfit in white in the yeah, next week. You got a big team not, that wants to make it happen. They'll, we'll fan out. Well, not with that attitude. We can't. It wouldn't mix their shipping. It's <laughs> got to happen. I, I guarantee it's impossible. Wow. So, like the clothes that I have. Uh, uh, so... If, okay, so if you want to do just like a different shirt, I guess. Yeah, but I was, find, we were totally talking about a different shirt. Tim. But, we weren't saying like that shirt in white. Is but, that what? But you I'm said? talking about thread count style stitching. Uh, oh, we were talking color. But like to wear a white outfit is meaningless. Like it has I, to be I, that outfit. Well, this is a specific kind of shirt Got that it. has a thick it, shirt. Like it's very nice. if I just wore like a white button up, I could buy that for a dollar. Yeah, I it see now it, why it, it's impossible to do this. But I didn't it, understand. Before. It wouldn't. It would not look like a white version of the outfit. I would just be wearing different clothes. I see. If there was going to be a white beanie that comes from, I believe it's an M empire, uh, a white true classic shirt, a white Volcom button up, and then I suppose if we're going, I'm wearing blue jeans, but you know, I, we only you care. About, <laughs> I, 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 I might, have socks on right now. It's super I'm, complicated. I might have white Kyle Walker Vans somewhere. 
Well, and what know. about it's cotton? Your your overshirt, your yeah. button down, cotton. So a big cotton shirt. Yeah, if you could get it exactly, yeah, like, that's what it's, it's all about. It's it's just stitching and style and everything. If if it was just like, hey, wear a white outfit tomorrow. It's like okay, okay. You know, like but if man. someone was like, we want that outfit in I white. Think it's if like, you oh, wore man. a white beanie of any kind, it would blow people's minds. It like. It's a well, signature part of how you present. It would be like if your favorite like superhero suddenly changed their emblem or something, you know, like people would be like, no, I don't like this rebrand. Either it's a white version of what I wear or it's just me wearing different clothes. So getting the white version of these things, I'll look and see if it's possible. Yeah, but... I know you got the green and the blue. Or I have a blue, blue one of these. Yeah. It's the really old though and I don't wear it anymore. You like, went through like just, a green phase. What do you like so much about that shirt? What is it about? I actually that have shirt? like ten of these. Yeah. What do you like? It's just the weight of it. No, it's just the, the shirt that I wear on the show. I don't okay. wear it when I'm not on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. You never he's... wear that shirt when you're not on the show. Or well, yeah, because I get it. I'll get it dirty that. and destroyed. Okay. So typically, when I'm outside, I'm wearing like baseball tees. Okay. So people who see me when I'm out doing stuff, like I'll be wearing like a black and gray baseball tee or something. I have a, I have a couple blue ones. I have a brown one, and I have brown pants. The, first the brown pants are only for certain events when you're getting worried about what's going on outside. You know what I mean? You're going to get down and dirty with the chickens? No. I'm talking about when you're scared. <laughs> oh, that kind of brown pants. <laughs> I actually do have a, uh, I have a pair of brown Volcoms that I've had for 12 years. And uh, I was skating in them and the crotch finally exploded. Wow. Which is what happens when you skate. And I tried getting iron-on patches and sewing them on. It didn't work. Mm. You just buy yeah. new pants. You can't get these ones anymore, I don't think. No. Yeah, I tried buying the newer version. It's different materials, and it's just not the same. I hate when same. that happens. Yep. I do too. And they, why do they change stuff without like I, no? Like you're like, why did you change it? Like makeup, they'll do that. They'll just discontinue a color. It's like, did anyone ask? She's Nobody like, you're asked the, for this. You're like the fifth person today that's asked me for that. I'm like, so hmm, obviously can you, you were to the selling brand? it then. Like, <laughs> come on, team. Any sense. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. I don't know. All right, what do we got here? Kalichnikov says, I tried Dr. Ian's recommended sun gazing method on staring at the eclipse, and now I'm nearly blind. You don't know. <laughs> this message was sent via speech to text. You silly liar. You didn't stare at the Did sun. Did anybody look at the ground under a tree during the eclipse? Oh, Richie Jackson oh, no. posted uh, on a his Instagram story. He and got a video see, of it. You could yeah. see all the little yeah, crescents. That's cool. It's like fractal. Yeah. That's it's weird, weird how that happens, but each, each break between the leaves acts like a pinhole camera. And you can see little eclipses all over the ground. Oh, wow. That's very yeah. cool. Super crazy. Yeah. Now I have two things I missed out on totality and that experience. Alpha Turkey. Catch him next time, you know. It's like such a day for me. Alpha Turkey says, did someone check on Seamus if he raptured? Yeah, he, well, he did. I, he posted a video of it. He was just floating up into the sky naked. Yeah, that wasn't surprising to anybody. You know? no, I've been seeing him do that for years. <laughs> He's done it once before, apparently. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder says, happy Monday. I hope everyone who could see the eclipse enjoyed it. It was great to have a few moments of reprieve from all of the craziness. I have I have bad news to report. I tried to view the eclipse through the Apple Vision Pro. It did not work. Mm, what happened? It was just a white blotch in the sky. It was like you couldn't even see the sun. You literally would. It, yeah. Actually, this is really cool. I recommend um, checking into if it's okay for your device to look at the sun with Apple Vision Pro. But I did. And the sun, What there was no ball of light. It was just a splotch of white outlined by the clouds that were surrounding it, but there were weird colors, orange, purple, and green, like bursting from the sun. And so I was reading that for women only, because men don't have this, if you look at the clouds and you see like orange and purple lining the clouds, you are a tetrachromat, meaning you have a fourth rod and cone in your eye, and you can see more colors than other people. Only women, I believe only women have this. If men have the same mutation, they're actually colorblind. And so what when I look- so interesting. Tetrachromat? Tetrachromat. Yeah, we should start saying that as like an insult. Like you're such a tetrachromat. Are you tetra? But that's like- having, It's a cool thing. It's like a yeah. superpower. Yeah, I right. know, but people wouldn't know. They'd be like, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> but when I looked up at the sun with the Apple Vision Pro, I could see the purple and orange on the clouds. Probably the camera's interpreting the UV. <gasps> camera's female. Converting it to a visible spectrum for me. And I was like, whoa, that looked oh. crazy. Yeah, it looked cool. Or I was breaking the camera on. It was frying because it was looking directly at the sun. I don't <laughs> know. Did Look, you get... it was for science. You had to do it. You're a yeah. boy. You're destructive. Did you do like the, the goggles off? I was at an appointment, so I didn't see it. But did you do like just look at it normal with glasses? We, we had the we had the clips glasses. They're, it's basically just like triple layer of like film or something. And so you can look at the sun through the eclipse glasses and just see a little do little little ball. But then when the eclipse happened, you could see it was pretty cool. And then we uh, we filled up a, bo a bucket of uh, a bowl of water and you could... It was still too bright to look at directly, but when you looked with the glasses at the bowl of water, you could see the rippling 
a clip, so it was pretty funny. Wow. Did the chickens do anything? Like any animal issues? No, I didn't notice anything. I think the issue for the partial eclipse where we were is that it didn't get noticeably dark. And it's because as it was getting dark, our pupils just dilated. So it just looked like it was a weird tint outside. Yeah. And then we went back in the house and it was super dark. And we were like, whoa, okay. Now we could realize because it was like in the house, the lights on, you can tell what it's like at night versus the day when the sun's coming through. And it was like it was nighttime. But outside, when it was at 90% and the sun was totally covered, it was it was dark, you know? I really oh. want to know if the dogs run away. Like, all I heard today was like, keep your dog on a leash. Keep your dog on a leash. The dog's going to run away. And they so, freak out. Do they? I mean, I've, I is there a video? Like, I haven't seen on the internet or anything. Are there like, have people been posting I've, their animals freaking out? There's know, a I've video from it. a zoo where the animals are freaking out. Giraffes are like running and panicking. Really? Yeah. What? All right, let's grab some more Super Chats. What have we here? Sir Average Joe says, help us in California. We are pushing back legislation that harms children. Please consider donating to Republican Maj Rudy Rasil for U.S. Congress and CA8. They had a great ballot initiative there, Protect Kids CA, where they wanted to stop uh, the use of puberty blockers on kids, uh, stop boys and playing in girls' sports. Um, I don't know if they're going to get the signatures for it this time, but it's nice to see blue states pushing back on some of this. Yeah. Rob Morgan says, to comment on an earlier segment, firstborn sons and daughters are dying all the time. They call it dead naming and blame the others for their deaths. So I did a segment where I joked about um, the plagues of Egypt. And I was like, you can you can easily find a story for each of the plagues. So there's like a story in the UK about a river that turned red and no one knows why. It's like blood. It's like dark red. And I'm like, and then you have like a lice outbreak in Georgia and you have leprosy on the rise and like all of these things are happening. And then I was like, and then of course we have darkness. You could argue the three days of darkness was the wildfires mm -hmm. when the smog blotted out the sun and created a haze for several days. Right. Three days of darkness. That yeah. was weird. The one plague we, we you, you can't really find is the mass death of people's firstborn sons. So I was like, if that happens, we can all collectively Maybe freak in out. Ukraine, though. Jeez. That's true. Wow. Did you see the, the guy with Down syndrome in Ukraine, the soldier? He's got mm -hmm. Down syndrome and the other soldiers are, oh, I read it. They're making fun of him. And they're, but he's like, I mean, they don't probably don't want him in the company. I don't know. But he's, it's rough. They're just drafting. Fix Bayonet says Trump should start calling RFK the legitimate Democrat candidate. Trump needs to offer debates with RFK, trolling Biden into talking about RFK, just not on MSNBC. They might as well be Radio Rwanda. That's a great idea, actually. Trump should say, everyone knows RFK Jr. is the real Democrat, not Joe Biden. Joe Biden's not even campaigning. RFK Jr. is. And then all that would do is if Trump debated RFK Jr., is it would give Democrats would support RFK. Trump's not going to lose any votes to RFK Jr., no, but I just don't think that. I mean, I, I don't agree with any of that. Actually, I think um, I, I think that uh, Trump can just ignore RFK. He only pulls votes from Biden, and debating him would be a mistake and a distraction. And he should just continue moving forward. Why would it, why would it be a mistake though? Um, because I actually think RFK, given the opportunity, would make some good points, and I do think that there's some. Um, you know, like he was supposed to speak at our summit in Philadelphia and agreed to do it. He called me at my house. I like walked into my kitchen. It was 930 at night. I looked at my husband. I'm like, oh, okay, he's on the phone. Because you know, his voice is so. Yeah. And he agreed to come. And then like a couple of months and then he backed out. And then he, he went. Does that. Yeah. And then he was on like uh, CNN. I think he did a town hall or Newsmax or something. And um, some operative, Biden operative said, you know, well, Moms for Liberty is uh, against gay marriage. And he was like, uh, yeah, well, a staffer, a staffer accepted on my behalf. I was like, well, that's baloney. Wow. And um, and then he said, and, and I canceled when I found out that that was their position. And that's not our position. And we have gay members. And so I just, it was just all a lie. So Wow, he lied. Yeah, a lot. So I, I don't know. I mean, but I do think that there were votes in the room for him, just to be clear. I do. People wanted to hear from him. Um, I think moms of kids who have vaccines injuries through the children's health defense stuff he's done um you know they 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 are hopeful about him or they were but our moms after that were pretty disappointed it looks like based on how his campaign is going and the kind of words he uses he may intentionally be trying to pull votes from democrats maybe that's the only way it looks all right let's read some more what do we have pinochet's helicopter tour says pretty sure stupidity was one of the new plagues that means we're being cursed by a, by very stupid people. This is the worst plague. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Stevens so. says, Tim and Serge, check out John Ward, world champion. He is a wordsmith and would be a great guest in the show. And he's not far from you pushing the culture war. 
a wordsmith? Does that mean he makes up words? That's awesome. I love doing that. Can we all be wordsmiths? Glibble, like glibble, re, glibble a, do. A recalibrationist. You know, you just add like uh, suffixes and prefixes to the common words and you can make longer and longer words. <laughs> that was how words. I got to regionalism. Crosslandism. Yeah, crosslandism, for instance. <laughs> Anti-crosslandism. When it's I started word. on the school board, I remember visiting a school and it said, had the kids signing in and it said auto magically or something. And I was like, it's not even a word. Why do we have like a ridiculous, it was something ridiculous. I was like, something. this is a public school. I'm, I'm more about, make believe words. I'm not into the anti-crosslandism. I'm more about the post anti-crosslandism. Yeah, yeah. When the, the anti-crosslandists had like a reawakening. Cross, after the fact yeah yeah uh post crossland no well, that would be post would be maybe there's a hyphen so that would be technically a compound word yeah you're right post crosslandism uh it's so fun to do when your mind is in like flow state and you can be like it's apoptic i know apoptosis is a thing so if something is doing that kind of thing it must be apoptic in nature that's, that's the adjective make, that's not making know, up words if the words are already part of word structures if, that exist i don't know if apoptic is an actual word but it makes sense that it would be the adjective for something that's going through apoptosis i need to know how this guy got a career as a wordsmith like does one just declare oneself a wordsmith there, there's much to know here we have a we have we have to address this one you me in the movie says the thing that shocks me the most about eclipses is that the moon is the perfect size and in the perfect distance to block the sun perfectly evidence of the divine i gotta stop you right there uh it's not yeah, it half is. Okay, well, well, I'll give you a technicality on this one. The reason why people take the total solar eclipse so seriously is because there are other eclipses where it doesn't fit the sun. Like in October when we had the annular solar eclipse. That is, the moon is further away from the earth and then it doesn't completely block out the sun. Then you have the total eclipse, which occurs only when it's in combination with the closest point to the earth where the moon is largest and uh, in the right position over the sun to create that. To be fair... That still does create the circumstance where the moon is, what do they say? It's 400 the size of the sun and 400 times, uh, 400 the distance. Yes. Creating the perfect uh, image. That is the rare moment. And that's why it's special. But there are many eclipses where, uh, what is it? Perigee? Is that when the moon is furthest away? Oh, I don't know. And it's smallest? Or am I getting it backed up? Back Is, is it ap apogee or perigee? I'm not a wordsmith. I don't know. Uh, how do you spell perigee? I get totally perigee. P-E-R-I-G-E-E. -E. Oh. Uh, I think Apogee is furthest. But I Apogee? Remember. Yeah, I believe so. Perigee, point of I think, actually, orbital. no, Apogee may be closest. Nearest. <laughs> Perigee is nearest. Nearest. Yeah, I okay, had it backwards. So I was right. I was Apogee right, yeah. is the furthest away. Yep, correct. Okay, so when it's at Apogee is when the moon is small, so it doesn't totally block out the sun, and nobody cared. Because that happened in October, literally, just a few months ago, nobody cared. And it went over the over Texas to the West Coast. Yeah. And so uh, the next eclipse, I think, is going to go coast to coast in the United States. The next U.S. eclipse is going to be in, uh, was it 2045? 20 years, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, 2045, and it'll go coast to coast. But uh, eclipses happen every 18 months, and you can travel the world chasing them. Yeah, and there are people yeah. that do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to your point earlier, I mean, I was watching some news coverage of people in Arkansas. It really was lovely to see all these people had like their families out and the kids were there and, you know, different people had different reasons for going and experiencing it, but it was something they were all doing together and then they're all outside looking yeah. at the... It's pretty neat. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's not the worst thing to like bring people together around. Yeah, I think so. All right. Taiwan Cricket says the planet is warming because gravity drives seismicity. Oh, I've not heard that Love one. Love that word. Which creates friction. As the at the pressure where things move, rocks don't melt; they plasmify. Read the work of former read the work of former U.S. Army Ranger Walt Brown. The planet is broken. Give me the give me that again. He put I, plasmify I that, in quotes. Did he just wordsmith? I think it is a word seism what, seismicity. What, what's that expanding Earth theory? It's real. It's uh, I don't know whose theory it originally was, but that the Earth was originally just a rock. It was a hardened rock of solid iron after that big cataclysmic, you know. Four billion years ago, I think the solar system formed and then it cooled down and then it's been twisted just like the sun is expanding. All these celestial bodies are slowly twisting open. And as it rips open, it looks like uh, hydrogen is shooting out of the core and interacting with the oxygen and making water. It looks like that's where the water is coming from. I can't tell exactly, but it seems like that's how the oceans are being formed. Makes it's it's Ray Wickle. There's videos of it on YouTube, uh, expanding Earth, and you can watch the simulation in it. You see how like Africa fits right into South America. Like it all, I think it all used to be just a ball of rock. Well, it used to all be Pangaea. They believe that's what they told me when I was growing up. Is that there's a floating continent called Pangaea, and then everything else was water. But this expanding Earth makes a lot more sense. That it's tearing open. I would agree with that. Do or don't? I do. Yeah, that proves the it. simulation's wild to watch. It I'm stuff fits together so well. Yeah. Cal Miller says Trump needs to treat every state like they are swing states. 
If the plan to flip Texas and Missouri blue is true, then needs to he needs to up his legal and campaign game. The reason why I think the Texas Missouri thing is plausible is that Mike Cernovich said uh, it's not it's not the reason that Mike Cernovich said this, but he makes a good point that the tactics used in 2020 will not work again for Trump. He's too far ahead. I agree. They can't replay the same strategy from 2020 with their shadow campaign. Time magazine calls it. They would need a different one and they would need to catch the right off guard. Texas flips blue ever so slightly. It's a winner take all state. They recently had a court uphold winner take all in the state. So you end up getting an extremely close race in Texas. It goes blue. 40 electoral votes go Biden. And then all they need is Arizona. So Trump can have all the swing states where he's up. Man, maybe you should have to be here for four years before you can vote. Maybe you can only vote if you are signed up for the selective service. Yeah, we're like, like when you move to a new state, give it a couple of years before you can vote. <laughs> like, what see the what hell? things are like there. What, why do they let you? I, hello, I'm going to vote for your new leader. I don't even know anything about. Like, and no, then leave. Leave, and then leave right yeah, away. Yeah, what the Remember when, uh, 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 what's his face? Andrew Yang said, I'm going to go down to Georgia and help him win. Mm -hmm. That's just so scummy. Yeah. Marianne Williamson, like, Move to Ohio all of a sudden. She's like, this is where I'm from now. Yep. <laughs> this is my campaign. Morgan Thiel says, for intellectual consistency, I'm anti-abortion, but not pro-life because I believe in capital punishment. Mm, yeah, the 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 editorial guideline we have for SCNR is that on issues of activism towards abortion or no abortion, it's not pro-life or pro-choice because those are political names and brands. Mm. It is uh, for or against abortion. Because like, Otherwise, you're arguing people's political terms they want to use for to describe themselves. Either you oppose or support abortion. So, yeah, saying I support the woman's right to choose to get an abortion is a really like circuitous way to say I support abortion. Right. I support the right of abort your right of abortion or whatever that. Or you are you are you are in support of abortion. Yeah, I don't well, like it. What if you want to be I... able to compel women to get abortions? You you don't want them to have a choice about it, right? Like, like saying you would go. be pro abortion, but be not pro, pro choice. Right. So that was maybe, a hypothetical. I guess that's why they don't. Call I don't know abortion. a lot of people who have that position, but there's an old joke from the '90s that I can't say on YouTube that I'll save for the after show about that. There's a lot of jokes from the '90s that were mainstream and fun that you can't say on YouTube right now. It was a good time to grow up, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Howard Stern had a good go of it, and now he's on the other side of it. How, how about that? All right, neglectful sausage says Ian is three fifths of a brain. Uh, Therefore, we can we can post. What is this? Post-birth abortion. <laughs> well, you made your point. Oh, shucks. He snuck under legally a person clause. Oh, well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do we got? What do we got? Joe Spinell says, person means any individual, including any officer or employee of the federal government or any group, entity, association, corporation, or foreign power. 50 USC 1801. Any individual. Okay, uh, is a baby an individual? Is an unborn baby an individual? No, because they're what connected. What if it's twins? Well, then no, I would say look, the mother's no, not an individual. The, she like, is. I'm just the joking. point is, the Supreme Court needs to answer whether or not person fall, uh, ba uh, unborn child falls under person in the Constitution. That's it. They have to do well, it. Well, to that point, you know, you could say, well, the baby can't, you know, survive on its own. Well, if I give birth to the baby and I just leave the baby on the ground, the baby can't survive on its own then. So is the baby less worthy of life at but that point? You, the Vosh, can't Vosh said babies aren't alive until three months after they're born. What? <laughs> He did on this show. <laughs> what does he think they're doing during the time? How does he classify them? Just downloading well, not, information. Uh, maybe it wasn't three months. He said sometime after birth. <laughs> sometime, not specific. I think yeah. it's right. When but the born. argument has been made that because babies can't form memories for the first three months, they're not alive. Someone just told me that babies don't feel pain for the first year. I'm like, well, that's what not the true. Hell? That's baloney. <laughs> yeah. Is that like an actual like? That's not no, true at no all. No one says that. Yeah. I don't know who well, that person on. was. Well, hold on. Some Ian. weird activist. Do you remember when you were seven and you you skidded your knee while riding your bike and fell? Sometimes I remember a few of those, but but not specifically. No, I can't, can't remember, remember the, the chain pain of childbirth. I mean, oh, like, that honestly, means it, that I, means you couldn't feel pain at all. Right. <laughs> that means that you don't feel pain in childbirth ever. Mm -hmm. I do that remember, I think, um, a hernia operation I had when I was like six months old. I remember a vision being, it was really cold. I was on like a metal, cold metal table and it, the really green light and dudes above me with masks looking down at me and the pain, the intense pain in my like lower abdomen. I remember that memory my whole life. No, that was the aliens. Could have been aliens. Yeah. Oh. I still don't know. <laughs> we were talking about aliens on our way here. Oh, yeah. My great fear of aliens. Yeah. Oh, all right. Here we got a, here we go. Best Boomer Vid says debate Dr. Shiva. Is that asking you to debate Dr. Shiva or me? You. Have you debated? Do you know Dr. Shiva? No. Who Why is would Dr. I debate Shiva? Dr. Shiva? The guy who invented email? 
We're, we're a strictly anti-email company. <laughs> Best Boomer Vids then says, debate Dr. Shiva for president 2024. Me? Is there some sort of joke in huh? chat that I'm not I don't know. Missing? Maybe it's just a general call. He's the guy who says he invented, invented internet, right? Was that him? I don't know. Looking it up. All right. All right. What do we have? Let's go. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Hake Avanyasen says, hey, guys, wanted to see if you heard of Ge Geo Bowden. It's a politifying meme that makes fun of Biden. I have no. Oh, no. oh, and there's a there's a cryptocurrency behind it or something. Yeah, no, I'm not interested in a Bowden, but it is a funny name. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? Someone else asked about the Bowden meme. Biden is no longer called called Biden. He's called Bowden. Look at X. Crypto asset worth over five hundred million dollar market cap. Sounds like someone's trying to pump and dump a coin or something. Yeah, like not interested in that. Super chatting some. There junk. was one super chat. I should see it on the screen that went Hakuna Cicada. Oh. <laughs> this is like so funny. Oh, to Hakuna Cicada. Were... Hakuna Cicada. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Amir Habibi says, "Tim, update your web browser, please. Thanks. It's always plainly visible when we're looking at." videos it says update your browser tim says no all right everybody if you haven't already would you kindly smash that like button and subscribe to this channel share the show with your friends and head over to timcast.com click join us because the show is only possible with you guys as members as a member though you get access to the discord server which is a chat room where you can hang out with under where you could hang out with other people and network networking is how is the most important thing in winning a culture war that's why we're also working on our physical locations where if you're an elite member at 100 bucks a month, you get a special Discord room. And once we launch the new coffee shop, hopefully in about a month or two, I think it's going to be two or three months, actually, uh, you will get a key fob that can get you in to the private club whenever it is open. So we're, we're aiming at like 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. or something, maybe even later on weekends. And we want to create a social club where people can hang out, network, and uh, it'll be really, really cool. So become a member at TimCast.com. The members only show is coming up in a few minutes. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Tiffany, do you want to shout anything out? Yeah, go to momsliberty.org and check us out. Join, start a chapter. It's a really great a group of people. And I think your point, the networking point, Tim, is so incredibly important. That's what we've done, you know, people holding the torch of liberty and saying, help us. Right Fight. on. Where can people find you? Go, oh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter or X or whatever we call it these days at the number four and then Tiffany Justice. Awesome. It's been Thank fun you. having you here. Oh, it was great. Thank you for having me. It was yeah. a pleasure. Of course. I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com. That's Scanner News. Uh, you can follow our work at Timcast News on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow me personally, I'm on Instagram at hannahclaire.b. I'm on Twitter at h0. I'm actually uh, filling in for Mary. I did it today, and I'll be back tomorrow on Pop Culture Crisis. So if you want to see us, it's uh, 3 p.m. on YouTube. A uh, shout out to Brett, who does all the work for that, uh, because I'm no help at all. Anyways, bye, Ian. Bye, Hannah Claire. Hey, you're going to be in Austin. Uh, I think at least your face is on the poster. Are you going to be there April 27th? Well, I'm going to be time? there. I'm moderating a panel. Oh, no great. Way. You are on. So you're also on here. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be there. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. I Go if you're, it seems like they want you there. You're really big. Your face I, is really big a, on the poster. I, I have to talk to them about it. Okay. So you may or may not be there, but you're but on the poster. It's supposed to be a really cool event. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be playing music with Toby Turner at the beginning to lead it off. He's hilarious, freaking guy. I love the guy. It's going to be awesome. And then we're doing panels. Uh, it's going to be comedy. I believe there's a bit of comedy and everything. And you can go to uh, festival.minds.com and get the tickets. And you can use promo code Ian to get 20% off. So do that. And I want to find out how many people buy that. So it's going to be it's super exciting to see how effective this pitch was. Thanks, Tim. And speaking of networking, man, your family is your first and primal network. Take care of it. Be really good to people around you. Uh, thanks for coming, Tiffany. Appreciate it. Uh, later, chat. See you guys on the after show if you're coming. We'll see Stay you all here. over at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.